So I'll call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order for, special meeting to order for March 30th, 7.36 p.m. Uh, would you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you all for coming. Uh, procedurally, for the purposes of the record, this is a special meeting that we called as a replacement for our regular meeting that was snowed out earlier this month uh, with the snowstorm and the blizzard town hall was closed. So we were not able to have our meeting. So we do have a quorum uh, tonight in terms of uh, members, uh, we, you know, five people to go forward. So I think the matters that are before us tonight would require uh, four votes uh, to be approved. So with, with five members, one, one associate, Ms. Jacobs is an associate, um, and so she can sit in tonight for a regular member unless he, unless he comes. Um, we can get started. So I guess what we have next on our agenda is the acceptance of minutes from January 10th and February 14th. I don't know if everyone's had a chance to review them. Motion to accept the minutes, Mr. Chair. Is there a motion, is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? I didn't attend the January 10th meeting, so I'm gonna um, withdraw my vote on that one. Should, would you like me to call them separately? If you could, please. Would you, would you uh, withdraw your motion to accept and make a new one for each month? Amend it. Amend it? Would you amend as it relates to January 1st and then we'll do February? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Make a motion to adopt the minutes for the January 10th meeting. All right. Uh, motion. motion. Second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, no. Miss McIntyre abstained from that vote. The next would be the February 14th. Make a motion to adopt the minutes uh, dated February 14th, 2017, Mr. Chair. All right. Is there a second? Mr. Chair, I was not here for the February oh. meeting, so I'll do what Ms. McIntyre did. I'll so Ms. McIntyre will second it. Okay. Second that. okay. That's fair enough. Any further discussion on that? Dirty trick, Mr. Chair, which is I wasn't here on February 14th. I could still make I can make a motion, but I I can't uh, can't wait to accept them. All right. Us so lovers were here for Valentine's Day. Three. <laughs> How many of us were actually here on February? I was here. You were Sandra and All right, fair enough. So that's a quorum, I think, as it relates to the minutes. So I think we can proceed in that regard, and we can accept them without prejudice. So if anybody wants to revisit the minutes at the next meeting, we can, we can bring that up again. All right, so in favor of the, the motion as it stands would be aye. Ellen? Uh, yes. Aye. Okay, and we'll note the abstentions of uh, Paul and, uh, okay, very good. So. Yeah, Paul and Allen. All right, so committee reports. Okay, so uh, Alex and I have a final committee report on uh, Osgood. Um, I won't say Osgood, but it's Osgood committee report. So what we did is uh, we met for a whole year, and we came up with um, something to present on the um, on the Osgood property. So we came up with could, three options. Just what? The, could you just so the committee. Just for the record, so the committee is a selectman's committee that's put together that you guys sit on? That um, land use board sit land on, use, and okay. it's open to the public as well. But the members, the, the members are, where oh, the report says, Mr. Kafore, you, Mr. Valancourt, Ms. Rednicki, and Ms. Jacobs. Are there, is there anybody else? That, that who was present? Um, the, the members of, um, what's, what's the lawyer's name? Um, Who? What's the lawyer for Osgood? Oh, Mabin. Okay. But they don't sit on it. They might be present, but it's a selectman's committee, right? I'm not quite sure. Okay. Rosen? Mr. Rosen? Yes. Uh, Who represent? represented Osgood was there. Okay. So who's this report? This report's from the committee itself? This is, yes. That was presented to the selectmen's meeting that uh, we both attended okay. and presented this to the selectmen, and they chose to make a decision on the options. We, we presented three options. Okay. 
And the first option was to keep it in place as is. The second was to put a, I can't help me with Moratorium. the word, thank you, <laughs> on, on it um, for the housing. And the third was to actually strike the whole portion of the bylaw. So this is with respect to the 40R overlay district? Correct. That this was is that, specifically that property. Okay. And so what we did over the whole year was we examined the whole corridor. We actually looked at Haverhill. We looked at you know the development of what's going on there. I think everyone's aware of what's being proposed at town meeting with the um, medicinal marijuana facility of Osgood. So that's a warrant for this property as well. So that, that's a proposed zoning change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. I haven't seen the warrant, so I can't speak on it. But I, I know that it's being presented as well. All right. So what the uh, selectmen decided to do is I wanted to bring to the board, we as a board couldn't recommend any of these options because Dick was on this, this committee, so and he's also a selectman. So the town manager felt that our recommendation. What do you, I don't know what you mean by that. We, the, the committee couldn't recommend what we wanted of the options to the selectmen because Dick was a selectman and he was on the committee. So the town manager felt but that. But it's their committee. Correct. They, they made it. The town manager recommended that we don't make a, um, but why are you being like this today, Alex? <laughs> today? <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just trying to follow. It was highly it's suggested that we don't, to as a committee. To keep it so that the selectmen as a whole can make their own decision, we were just to present three different options that were viable options, not to pick they one or the other. It was highly suggested. Okay. By the town manager. All right, so I'll stop asking questions. Okay. <laughs> you can certainly ask questions. Okay. She All right. Start you, I don't know. Okay. I'm just so, playing catch up. Go ahead. I apologize. So I wanted to bring this to the board, and because mm. our meeting was before before the snow, I wanted to uh, have a suggestion to the board, because as a board and as residents of North Andover, we could suggest which option we prefer. But because of snow and the t and the second meeting was March 22nd, it didn't happen. So what did happen is um, I spoke with Eric today and they decided to do, go with the second option and the... They being the selectmen. The selectmen went with the second option. Thank you, Al. Okay. Not the um, committee. They adopted it. You're saying the selectmen adopted the second option. Correct. Okay. Because what's happening is that we're doing a... Um, master plan. A master plan on that whole corridor in the whole t in the town as a whole. So the owner of the property, Osgood, just uh, decided to voluntary, voluntarily put a covenant on the, um, on the property to have no housing. Because one of the main concerns of that property is 500 mm -hmm. plus homes, what it will do to the school system, what it will do to our town, re town resources. So I actually have a copy of the Restriction if anyone wanted to look at it on the property. So this is a um, It's a it's a voluntary moratorium correct with with respect to housing Just, a residential. Just yes 40 40 any kind of residential or 40 R or 40 B or the residential that's allowed under the 40 R which I believe is I think 530 units if you oh, want I to see. see it Okay, and they voted on that already they did and I actually have the um, the the restrictions for the deed. Eric had given me these today. Oh, okay. Theoretically, is the door still open for a 40B? There's a, um, yes. Even though it's restricted and it's, uh, because you can't, technically you can't put a, you're going to have to say the word, mor moratorium. Moratorium. <laughs> you can't actually put a moratorium on it. It's not something that's it's not legal. legally able mm -hmm. to be done, so this is supposed to allow it? In lieu of? Well, in versus actually getting rid of the entire 40R, because then other issues come into play, which if the, medicine, if the marijuana issue passes, then it would change the entire design of what the 40R was originally doing anyway. Well, my recollection when when the town adopted the 40R, you know, years ago, that, they, that 
the state was there was inducement from there was a financial inducement from the Correct. state to and have those overlay and districts. And that will that will have to be paid back. That's but there was a certain amount of money. Six hundred approximately six hundred thousand dollars would be have to be paid back to the state. Yeah. But the state really doesn't want to do that. The state doesn't want to give that money back because that was not the whole purpose of a 40-hour. Hmm. So that's why it's a moratorium, moratorium. on on the uh, housing. Yeah, it's, it's a, I'll put some words It's a Band-Aid. Put words in our mouths and suggest that the state would rather have the site redeveloped as everybody Correct. originally concepted mm -hmm. rather than the mere retenanting that's been going on Correct. over time. And so therefore, the property owner for some reason is saying, I don't want to redevelop and pursue a residential option in this corridor, so I'm a good guy. Not necessarily. No. Okay. No. Well, I, well, I don't want to get into what somebody may or may not be saying. I just th this was this is the result of the uh, committee. Correct. And had we had our meeting, we would have presented. I yeah. would have Alex and I had would have gone to the selectman meeting and presented what we would have recommended. Sure, but they've already taken action, so this, is, this is an update. It was a timing issue, yes. Yeah, okay. And a mother nature issue. Sounds like a lot of work went into it for you guys, a lot of meetings. It was, um, some of it were colorful. <laughs> it's always colorful, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me, that was colorful in this one. <laughs> so that's where we stand on that, so there's gonna be no housing on that property today until the town actually um, reviews that and has a master plan in place. All right. And how long is the moratorium for? I do not know. I think a big issue. I think until the master plan Probably until the play. master plan and then. Or town warrant. Or the town warrant. Okay. Well, I thank you uh, for your service on that committee. I'm sure, it, uh, I'm sure it was a lot of work. Did anyone on the board have questions on it? No. I think it's been highly suggested we don't ask questions. <laughs> in a, in a, you can absolutely ask questions, but not in a, an owl way. <laughs> that puts okay. me on the spot. <laughs> well, you did a good job answering them anyways. Snappy. <laughs> All right, so okay. we exhausted committee reports for tonight. What a relief. Okay. Thank God. So what I'd, what I'd, rec what I'd like to do, um, because we have a continued public hearing that probably is a rather lengthy presentation. I'd like to go a little out of order and have Mr. Morris present uh, one Peter Street because he's here, he has a change um, as it relates to something that was approved back in May and he wants to present it to the board to see if we consider it to be a major or a minor change with respect to what was approved already. And so maybe that would make sense to have him go first and we can have that talk and then move on to uh, the other hearing. So, uh, Mr. Morris? I can't promise I'm not gonna ask you any questions though, Mr. Morris. <laughs> but he'll be a little more gentle with you than he is with me. <laughs> I, I thought I was being gentle. I don't know how not to. I don't know how to couch it sometimes, I apologize. I think Ellen just likes to give me a hard time, to be honest. I second that, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so, just I, before you before you present, I just I'll help the history here to kind of help everybody out with. Is we approved a variance for you back in May? Yes. Was it a variance or was it a special permit? Uh, variance. Okay. So <coughs> you didn't act on it yet, right? You didn't get a Correct. building permit. Correct. Okay. Um, so, did you? Do you recall if you took it and recorded it, the variance? Yes. Was it recorded? Yes. Okay. So you're, you're entitled, I think, if you don't act on it within a certain amount of time, you're entitled to an extension, right? A uh, six-month extension. Uh, one year, I'm pretty sure, right? You have to act on it within one year. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we'll, we'll check that in the course of our discussion. Okay. Uh, but you're entitled to, like, a, a six-month extension if, you know, if they're not acted on. Okay. So so they don't lapse or expire. Okay. So I think it's probably good that you're here in, um, with what you want to present. So what do you have? Uh, I needed to make a uh, modification to the plan because the, uh, the bids that I was getting for the project it became, were very high and it became kind of an upside down situation where the, the banks were concerned. I wouldn't be able to get um, It'd be upside down 
on the property. So, so what we did was we stayed within the setbacks, and it's, we we uh, pumped out the back by the 26 by 26, kept the two car garage under, and put the two bedrooms and a bathroom above the garage. So I guess my first question. The question that I really have is the relief that was granted that was advertised mm -hmm. in terms of the dimensional requirements, has anything changed as it relates to that? I mean, are you still within what was granted? Yes, yes. Because I think that that's kind of important. If you're looking to, to so. change something that needed additional relief, mm -hmm. Not, I, that might be problematic. You're different. From what I'm looking at, yeah, it's not the same. You, have, you didn't stay within. Oh. So we get 15 on this side, you're 12, then you're 12.1. So your relief is different. So your variance is going to change. So I think it's up to this board to determine if this is minor or major first. Before well, we I go just want him to tell me what's different yeah, because I'm not, I'm just trying to get a handle on what's different, you know? Because wasn't this, wasn't this the it's, one it's where. a better plan, just to let you know. It's a nicer plan instead of the angles. It fits, it fits in the neighborhood. Yes. I have a handout if you want it. I do. Would that yeah, help I have before and after? Nope. Okay. We have it right and I actually have the original decision. I had uh, Merrill get the original decision first okay. as well. Yeah. Is that a second page? No, just the one. Doesn't have a second page. Um, it's different, but it's all, but it's, but it is more conforming. I think the issue is. The deck, uh, the deck side, right? The, the two decks, yeah. The is that going out? We had granted 13.5 feet, and you're less than that, right? 12.1. 12.1. .1. .1. Yeah. I, could I speak to that? Yeah, please. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, the decks certainly can be modified if that's an issue. I think the main thing that we're looking for is the addition, the house addition itself in the rear. And as far as the decks go, um, I took a good look at the zoning code and it, it seemed to say that uh, for the setback for a deck would be four feet into the setback area. So when we were asked to revise the plans, we were trying to be very careful not to ask for any new variances. But we did figure we would be okay with the open decks if we were four feet over the setback line. So if 13-1 was granted. A deck is a structure. It doesn't matter if it's all, if, what it is, it's a structure. Well, we'd be happy to change it. I just don't want them to be held up. But, but it's less, than, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess in terms of how it's connected, but it it almost looks like what, you, what you're proposing now is less than what was granted to you. It's, it's oh, yeah. better plan than the previous one. Correct. As far as the variances that they're looking for. They're looking for far less right. than, what, than what we granted them. Sure. The way I see it. Right. Well, they're, so, no, they're mm -hmm. looking for a, a greater variance. No, a lesser. No, if you look, approved. Where? Approved. We approved 13.5. They're asking for 12.1. The approved was 13.5. They're looking for 12.1. Well, it look. was different size. So okay. you advertised side and two sides and rears last time right you had a, a rear approval so really I mean so we have to just be careful in you know what the way I look at it is I can't change anything that wasn't advertised or I couldn't consider changing anything that, that wasn't was our intent yeah we don't want to hold it up ask for any new variances and the decks are gravy if, if there's any issue with the decks but as far as I understood from looking at the zoning code if 13 feet was granted, then we could go nine feet. You could go less. Yeah. I think so, but too. Because it's not covered. It says if it's an uncovered deck, mm -hmm. you're allowed to go four feet over the setback line. You don't have to, I mean, you don't have to build, you can't exceed what was granted, but you can always build less, is my understanding of the way that it works. Our intention is to make this quite a bit less. You know, so, I mean, I think in that regard, the, the plan, you know, the plan is different. But I don't know if it's if it rises, in my view, rises to the level of being different as it relates to needing to do a new public hearing. 
because it is, but you know, you'd have to, you need, you know, four people to go along with that. You know, otherwise, sure. You know, what would have to happen is you'd have to re-advertise, you know, uh -huh. your new relief. From from my understanding of the way that it works, you know. Al, can you explain the deck thing to me? Because that's diff that's new to me. I never heard that. Uh, what? That code uh, of the deck has to be four feet less. Uh, I've always thought it was to the lot line where you're building. I don't know what you mean. They're just showing it as being less. No, she just said, said something about decks. You can have. I've never heard of that bylaw, so I don't know where you saw that or where you. I I put it put it in the handout. I can hand you, I can hand it to you. Which handout? You don't have it. Oh, okay. Well, that's so, why would I, you I like don't it? Know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't, I don't Would you? Know if I have it either. Do I have it? No, I brought it in case you. Oh, you brought there it. Were any questions? Yeah. Oh, do, uh, it's good to present them when you're presenting this to give it so we can have it. Yeah. Sure. If you're looking at it and you reference something, do you and if you extra? have it, yeah. then may I? <laughs> it's on the last page. Oh yeah. Thanks. Never heard of this What was? It? What was Um, that gets proposed, and then the zoning. Is this part of our sure. bylaw? Well, Alan, here. Yes. Oh, we have it. Oh, I, I, I have that, yeah. I can see that. Okay. But I guess I'll reiterate, the deck is sort of gravy for the plan. If there's any issue at all on the with the board, then we'll reduce the size of the decks. Well, I mean, you understand the whole notice. So, when you want relief from a particular dimensional requirement and it gets advertised, the idea is notice to all your neighbors. No. You, you, you know, so when you came in with the first public sure. hearing and we have the public hearing, people, you know, statutory butters within 300 feet tend to have an opinion sometimes when you're looking for relief from variances. So, I guess the issue is, you know, is if this is less than what was advertised, you know, are we covered? You know? Sure. So that's, I think that's what we have to wrestle with. Was, was there, a, did, the, did the new building, did the building inspector give you an opinion on this at all? Was, did, did you see him? No. Assistant. Okay. Building inspector, which. Mr. Belang Mr. Belanger? Uh, no. Okay. No, but I, I was informed that I had to go in front uh, to bring this forward to the committee. So. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I mean, they didn't, no one gave you an opinion on it in terms of. No, that it would have to come here first. Mm. Okay. Um, just to clarify, what you refer to is 7.31. It doesn't refer to decks. It's just uncovered porches, balcony, open fire escapes, chimney, and flues. I don't see anything where it says decks. Well, what, what is the issue with respect to the... Well, she thinks that she can be four feet into yard setback. Or, well, th that the variance doesn't matter, so with a deck. No, what she's saying is the variance, what, what they're proposing is less than what was approved. It, what was approved? No, no. What was proposed was 13.5. That's what was approved. And what they're, what they're showing now is 12.1. Right, so it's further back out. So there's, closer there's to the house. Clearance. Okay. It's closer to the house, not closer to the lot line. Yeah, but this deck thing doesn't, has nothing to do with it. Am I, am I missing something here? See, this, this is 12.1, so this is 12, 12 feet away from the lot line. Right. This one is 13 feet away from the lot. Right. And then it's this so one that's this the issue. is. Oh, I see. So this this is more relief, not not substantially more, but Correct. this is the <coughs> the revised is more relief in this area. The applicant has said if the deck is in any way a problem, that they can modify that to be what this is. Sure. That's they'd well. have to they'd have to stay within the 13.5. Correct. If if that corner is an issue for the <coughs> the applicant is willing to uh, as more well than willing as to address that. The front deck should be. 
12. What, you, was, what are you calling the front? Well, they have a 15, and then they changed it to 12. I don't know if it's covered or not. This happens to be. No, the 15 was from here. Correct, but it's still considered the side. We granted them 15 <coughs> here. Now they're asking for 12. See, the thing is, we can't grant you any more relief from the public hearing. You know, sure. you have to stay within, I, you have to stay within what was already granted in terms of the box, unless you're going to notice a new hearing. No, that was our intent, <coughs> to so stay within, within what you had previously granted. I think, I think that's one major hurdle for you. So if indeed we haven't stayed within that with the deck, we'll modify the deck. On both sides. On both sides. I mean, nothing stops you from filing a whole new petition and going through all that <clears throat> again, if you want to. You know. but, um, so I, I think what would be helpful is, you know, the building inspector sort of acts as the um, you know, the enforcement wing, you know, of, of the bylaw. He, he's the, he's his zoning enforcement officer. So he, you know, if he makes the finding that you're within, or your engineer or architect, land surveyor shows that you're, you're within what was approved, I think that's something that they're going to be looking for, you know. So with, with that said, Mr. Chair, I, I, it sounds like what we're looking at, if I, if I may, and it's a visual that y'all can't really see, but I'm going to do so that we can advance the conversation here. So it sounds like, if I'm seeing things right, this is an issue, which the applicant has indicated is, is actually, so, so the board has a technical issue, the applicant can accommodate the issue in the, yeah. looking at the northwestern corner, the deck. And then in the eastern side of the building, uh, this, is, this is approved. 15 feet, but we're at 26. So on the eastern side, we we are we don't have any issues whatsoever, near as I can tell. Right. And then on the northern side, we've got 20 foot setbacks in two places. On the approved and on the revised, we're at 20 feet. So I'm not seeing that we have any issues on the northern side of the structure either. Right. And on the southern side of the structure, there doesn't appear any changes. So unless I'm mistaken, it looks like we only have one technical issue here in the northwestern corner, which is about a foot and a half. So in, in my mind, if that's the case, in my mind, if the applicant is backing that deck up to be in conformance with the, the approved plan, so get this 12.1 up to 13.5, which it can do pretty easily, mm -hmm. I'm not noticing anything major about this, nothing substantial. The, the only thing is that the, front, the, de the 12 on the um, deck to the front. The 12. Right. Um, that's Right here. <coughs> but she's she's calling right there. Okay, so we'll call that southeastern. Mm -hmm. We granted fifteen. Uh, twenty. See, I don't know how you what what you call that. But is that the front setback? Is it a side setback? What setback? Oh yeah, I think that? we. I I remember we talked a little bit about Correct. that at the last meeting as well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um. Yeah, we didn't have a setback issue on Correct. that line last time. So that's that's a, that's an issue there that needs to be addressed as well. Well, with this revised, I believe on the last meeting there was thirteen foot one. It should be so. In just the, to show you what we're, we're talking, talking about, front. because just to make sure. So oh, sure. You're showing that on, on the front, on the existing property line here. Okay. Right. You're, we didn't have a setback issue as it relates to that, okay. but here on this one it's showing 12 feet. Yeah. And I think you need you might need to address that with the building inspector to okay. see what you know in terms of if that's an accurate measurement because I don't think we necessarily addressed that side of the dimensional relief. No, it, it was left fuzzy, I believe. Well, I think it just, I don't think you hit it last time with the angle because uh, you, you sort of squared it off. Yeah, we didn't protrude into the, exi the existing setback after the, prop the corner of the property was taken was 19 and a half feet. 
and that 19 and a half feet was projected all along. So and I don't know if the, if, you know, I really don't know how, because of the angle, if he's calling that a, a side setback or a front setback. I don't know because right. it's different. You know, we have to figure out what he's going to call that. Okay. In order to, unless it's just, it looks like a side to me. Yeah, you put a gun to my head, I'd call that a side as well. Yeah. Correct. So the side, I believe, was granted at 15. Well, see, it's a little tricky. Oh. <laughs> it's a little tricky for you there because the side, I, th I think you're probably good, but I, I think you want him to tell you that because he's the enforcement officer. Sure. Because I see where the side was granted at 15, but that was on a different angle. Not to be technical, but I right. guess that's our job, right? <laughs> Is to be technical. Yeah. So, you know, we have to make sure that what his position on that is going to be. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, these are just corner decks. I mean, the footprint of the house is you can cut shave in half. Three, you can shave three feet off that, I would imagine. Easily, yeah. If you we can if, reconfigure. If, you need, if need be. Yep. I mean, my, my suggestion would be is if, you know, we have another meeting, um, what, in a week and a half, two weeks? April 11th. April 11th, our regular scheduled meeting. Um, you know, maybe you want to come back at the April meeting with a, uh, a plan that shows what we talked about, that you're bringing the angles in. It gives you a chance to talk to the building inspector, and maybe we just wrap up the discussion then, because you'd want to see a final plan. I would, Mr. Chair, yes. Ms. I would, too, yes. So, you know so, what I mean? Um, whatever you desire. I, that would preclude getting a building permit until after that, I presume. Well, we kind of prove a plan that shows what lies in excess of what we granted. So we would need to get a sure. new plan in to take a vote on it that would show that you're within what was approved in terms of the setbacks. Okay. I don't have, I, I can tell you, I think we could, I'm comfortable voting myself saying that it's an insubstantial change bec as long as you're within what was approved, okay? I mean, I feel as though that as far as your setbacks go, the only thing I don't see here is the height. You know, I want to make sure the height is also with what we approved that the roof lines are consistent. Um, uh -huh. But I think generally as it relates to your footprint, as long as you're within what the action the board took, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And then the building inspector could give you some guidance in, the, in before our next meeting in terms of how he would, if he would have any issues with that. I think that might help get it resolved. I don't you know if anybody else wants to offer you an opinion on it, they can. So you know the, the two issues that we're talking about under his eye, this this 12.1 over here yeah. has to come down to 13. 13.1, 13 I believe. 13.5. 13.5. Right. And then this it one over here, that. you have to bring that back, you know, within whatever it complies with, because that wasn't necessarily uh, approved. Okay, and I presume that we If cannot... the building inspector says to you that he thinks it's in conformity, then, you know, he yep. can tell us that. And then we would not be coming back? No, you still have to come back. Oh. We, we have to approve your change. But the only other thing I'd want to know is what it's going to look like. You know, just do you have elevations done? Yes. I can pull the board. You know. That's half the battle for us, as you know, making yeah, sure no, it looks like... Yeah, no, we came with anything it. you might like to see. <laughs> oh, you have a lot of... A, oh. Holy mackerel, okay. Naturally, it's on the bottom. Okay, here we go. Oh, you've done a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> May I, I'll come forward a little bit. Yeah, you guys want to just... So, here is the rendered site plan here. So, this is the existing house. Gray shaded is a simple rectangular new footprint. Yep. And these are the decks, which, mm -hmm. as I said, could be more. This is the existing porch. So when you come to the house on Peter Street, it looks exactly the same as it does now. Sure. 
<coughs> so here's the Peter Street elevation, mm -hmm. existing porch, and here's the deck beyond, just the rail. Um, pretty much the same, work front, sloped hip roof, and then what we're doing in order to add a viable garage and two bedrooms, which are really the priority for the client, we're extending, here's the addition in the back. So it picks up the ridge a little bit lower of the existing and it's perpendicular. So you can see that on the, right here. So there's an overlay portion yeah. and then the, the hip roof extends this way. Here's the existing hip roof going that way. Yeah. And your driveway cut exactly the same right at the same grade, yeah. because right now it comes in in the basement level. Perfect. So this is a very So, so the driveway is the same? Driveway is the same. It's expanded here because we have to get over to here. Mm -hmm. So, but that works out well so someone can turn around to get out on Couture because it would be impossible to back out onto Couture. So your previous site plan showed, showed the parking? The civil bid, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so, that's how the garage works in plan. Here it is in elevation. So the grade on Peter Street is up at the first floor. Here's your existing house. Here's the addition with garage down here. Two bedrooms over the garage. It's nice and tight. So there's, it's, a, it's a plan that addresses the high cost of what the previous scheme was. It, was, it made no sense for this site. So this is a very tight scheme. Our intention was to work completely within the variances that were given and to do something you know, modest and sensible here. So here's your two bedrooms up above the garage, here's your two-car garage, and here's the existing house just the way it was. No extra height, no nothing. So, and they get what they need. So um, I think this makes eminent sense, but we do need the variances that you did grant, because yep. in order to even expand this way, we need that 20 foot setback at the rear. It wouldn't work otherwise. It's already quite tight. Right. Yep. And here's the new rear elevation. So the garage is on this side, so there'll be a slight retaining wall along the edge of the driveway, mm -hmm. just like there is now. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's your garage level here. Here are your two bedrooms again upstairs. Simple attic space over that. Here's your existing roof going perpendicular. And here's the deck on one side and the deck on the other side. This deck is totally optional. You could eliminate it completely. This deck you really need because it's your way up from the driveway to the first floor. Mm -hmm. So plan-wise, <coughs> existing house and it's a one bedroom house with a one car garage mm -hmm. which is tight. So just to bring it up to what they need, they need two more bedrooms in the garage. So here are the two bedrooms over the garage. One, two. Here's your way up from the driveway with your deck. And here is the other deck. So all right. So the idea even with this deck is it's not really a deck, it's a patio mm -hmm. or because you have to clot, you have to scale this hill to get up, and you don't want this to be any higher than need be, because then you have too many steps, and it's like too much of a drastic climb for the driveway. So we kept it down; it would be mostly a patio as opposed to a deck. But we'll morph that, set it back. Right. Does that help at all? I still don't see the height on the, the elevation on there. Was it showing on there? Uh, yes. Yeah, my eyesight's not that good enough. Um, we do have we have it in the packet. But yeah, so everything height wise is on. Does it say my feet? Yes. So it doesn't. Uh, let me see if it doesn't go. So the height, the actually the highest roof um, will be the existing roof, which is which is fourteen four above the first floor, which is. Eight feet above, so call it 22, 
So it's on. 22.4. So the elevation's on there. Are you satisfied with that? I think that's all that I'm satisfied with the elevation. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I, I just, yeah, I just think you, you need to work <coughs> within the confines of what was granted. You know, we have to have all those plans were filed, right, with, uh, with the zoning office, all these elevations. Yes. We have all that. Um, so I think the important thing is we would, we would need to, if the board is inclined to approve it and make the finding, we would need an updated <coughs> plan that shows that you're within, you're within the footprint. Okay. And I will consider the data something that can go for the past and stuff. Well, we can't grant the deck to go past anything that was approved without a new hearing, without a new public hearing. Yeah. So, so it's considered not a minor modification unless you change it. Okay. Is, is what uh, is some of it. So I would, I mean, I would think you'd want to, because I think you're going to want to come back for the. <coughs> you know, the question is, you, you don't want your variance to lapse by May if things if you, if things don't get off the ground in time. You might want to request an extension of the variance in the April meeting because we can give you, you know, a six month one six month extension. Should we do that right now here? No. Well, it wasn't noticed. We could do it in April. We could do it in April. Okay. Good, good advice. Thank you know, because if you very because if you have a delay in going to get the permit and you don't have a shovel in the ground, you know, sure. I don't want you to have a hiccup. Because it might snow. If it snows, <laughs> there's enough time to get it noticed for April. Yeah, you don't have to. You, for a one-time extension, you could just put on that we can put on the Is agenda. Enough time, Mara, to get this notice for April. I mean, she has to come tomorrow, right? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Two weeks. You don't have to advertise it in the paper for the an extension. extension. Does not need an advertisement. Not that I'm aware of. We can put it on the agenda, just like this was. In sure? terms of, yeah, I'm not aware of any statute that says you have to put that in the paper. Okay. And, and that's something that's because they're allowed. Because they, you know, they, they're granted by right. I think if you request the extension prior to it lapsing. Okay. So, I. Uh, you know, anybody that wants to correct me on that can do it. But my recommendation would be come back with an updated plan in April and request in writing to the zoning office to have your variance extended for six months. And then that can go on the agenda. Right. Unless the board feels, you know, if the board feels as though that it's too substantial a change and they're not going to grant it, maybe they could tell you that now. But Otherwise, I, I feel like with those changes, you'd be in good shape. And just, just, just to be clear, because it's hard to kind of say things, sure. just to make sure that we're all on the same page. This corner of the deck is what we're, is the issue, and this corner of the and deck is, is the issue. 19 foot 6, and this deck will be different. <laughs> so oh, I presume okay. it'll be that's 19 foot 6 pass. Okay. That's that's the worst case scenario on the Chapter 40A, Section 10 makes a provision for the extension period not to exceed six, six months at the discretion of the board upon written application of the applicant. So that's what you have to do. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Okay. We'll see you at the next meeting. We would have the petition for variance of Gerald Brecker, here of Don Bornstein, Johnson and Bornstein, for the property at 271 Stephen Street, parcel, map 95, parcel 8 in the R3 zoning district. So I know you guys have a team here. It's taken you a number of months to uh, want to go forward. And uh, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Don Bornstein. I'm an attorney. Uh, my office is located at 12 Chestnut Street in Andover, Johnson and Bornstein. 
I represent the applicant before you tonight, Jerry Brecker. Um, and I do want to thank the board for your long indulgence on our many continuances. Um, I'm going to let uh, the team we brought with us tonight sort of set up behind me and just keep going. Um, so we'll make maximum efficiency of our time. Um, the property at issue um, before the board today is 271 Stevens Street. And um, again, the applicant is Jerry Brecker. He's here with us tonight. Um, the owner of the property is William Melvin. Um, Mr. Melvin has owned the property for a long period of time. Um, just to, by reason of explanation, this application was filed back in August of this year. It's been continued many times with the board's indulgence. And that was primarily due to there were um, probate court applications filed shortly after we had filed for our relief with the board um, that basically put a hold on this. Um, those probate court applications had to do with Mr. Melvin. Um, so we had a lengthy period of time where those were the uh, control over the property um, was at some issue in the probate court. Over the course of that time, though, um, uh, there, the probate court has appointed a conservator, a conservator for the, uh, for the owner of the property, Mr. Melvin. He's here with us tonight, so the probate court appointed uh, conservator Roy Jeleno is here with us tonight. He's way in the back corner back here, but he's... We'll, we'll note Mr. Jeleno in the record is here. Good, yeah, and he's available in case the board has any questions. It's an unusual circumstance. I've never had it happen to me in a zoning board or a land use situation before. I'm a land use attorney, not a probate court attorney. I can't say I understand the ins and outs of it, except I do know that Mr. Jeleno has been appointed by the probate court with authority. Copies of those orders are in your file. I have them here with me tonight as well. And in addition to that, um, Mr. Jeleno um, executed an owner's authorization. So you have a, about a page long owner's authorization describing his um, authority. I do have a copy of that with me. If, if, I'll pass that out to you just so you have it handy sure. in case there's any questions on that. What's the date on that one? So sure, so the, the owner's authorization is dated March 9th, 2017. So that's fairly new, okay. Yes. Yeah, and I have a little packet here of the owner's authorization, a couple other letters of support. So why don't I, if you don't mind, I'll pass that out to the members right now, and you'll have it, and I'll hit those throughout the presentation I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, you can pass them out. I, I don't think the board has any, I, mean, I, I don't want to speak for anybody. I mean, I, the authority with right. which you're here is under the purchase and sales agreement. Mr. Yeah. Brecker is the applicant, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm more interested in the, uh, in the merits. But we'll certainly note that this in the record, the, uh, the authorization on behalf of the property owner, dated March 9th, 2007, by it's Roy, right? Roy F. Gerinell as temporary conservator for William E. Melvin. So we'll note that that's received along with letters from the Historical Commission dated September 14th, 2016. And... <coughs> Yeah, and all those they, other letters behind it should already be in your file. Um, yeah, we I, have these. So there's a letter dated November 21st from Kitco Farm LLC, as it relates, dated November 21st. Um, Tim Carlson and Richard Rau Radcliffe has a letter dated October the 20th. Of course, it's not signed. Yes, I believe the version in your file is the version, signed. The version of, I will right, have to check, and then. There's another letter here from Corey Lawler, <coughs> 290 Stephen Street, dated October 15th, 2016. This, this copy isn't signed. Maybe it's signed in the file. But, so just goes to the weight. Great. Okay, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we had spent a, a lot of time sort of in limbo before this board. Um, the probate court cleared that up for us. We filed those materials with the, uh, with the board. Um, we were all teed up to see you earlier this uh, month, and then Murphy's Law struck, and uh, we had a killer snowstorm. Um, the board was uh, kind enough to have a special meeting tonight to hear our matters and the other matters on your agenda from that night, and we very much appreciate that after this long sort of protracted wait in this property. 
Um, I know uh, Mr. Brecker is very eager to complete his transaction with Mr. Melvin to buy this property. Mr. Melvin is very eager, and it's even explained in that owner's authorization um, document, very eager to sell that property. Um, and the conservator is eager to do that for him. Um, with me tonight, and in, in just a minute, I'm going to turn it over to them because they have the technical information, the real meat of what's before the board. Um, our development team, Phil Christensen, um, civil engineer, um, uh, office in Haverhill, He'll uh, cover the site plan, uh, existing conditions, what we're proposing, um, how it fits into the neighborhood, what's in that area. Um, also with us tonight is the architect for the project, uh, Butch Rezoik, um, and I hope I got his name right. Was I close, Butch? Sure. All right, thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, Jerry's with us tonight as well. Um, before they get started, I'll give you a very brief snapshot of the property and what we're looking to do. Um, and maybe if, Jerry, if you could put up the uh, shirt, some of that old plan. You don't get to add up all the time, Attorney Bornstein, from all the meetings that you, we couldn't go forward. You only, you only get your fair shake of time for tonight. Uh, sure, because I was ready to take 11 meetings worth just yeah. all tonight. And I can see people are eager for that, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so this is uh, the, the entire parcel here is, uh, is a little over 41,000 square feet. It's got 322 feet of frontage on Stevens Street. It currently has an existing single-family home. That home, according to your assessor's office, was built in 1880. So we've got a 135-year-old home, plus or minus, on the site right now. It's in um, a somewhat deteriorated condition. It's not currently lived in. Um, this property is in the Residence 3 district, which is your 25,000-square-foot lot area district. Um, Mr. Melvin has owned that home for over 50 years. Um, in 1963, so I'm, I'm going to safely assume no one on this board voted on this variance, but in 1963... Ellen, I did not. Ellen might have. I was not born yet. Ellen certainly did not. I was not born um, yet. Yeah, soon. <laughs> in 1963, this board granted a variance to Mr. Melvin, and what that variance allowed him to do, what he asked to do, is he wanted to divide his property might not be real visible from here, but I'll walk it forward in just a minute. He wanted to divide this sort of triangular-shaped property um, into two lots. He wanted to keep the existing home. Actually, at that time, there was even a second dwelling on that same lot. And then he wanted to create a conforming lot next to it and build a home, have that lot available to construct a home on the second lot um, that we would create out of his property. The board granted that variance in 1963. Um, those plans did not occur at that time. Um, that construction of that second home did not proceed. Mr. Melvin continued on the property for many, many years. Um, one thing that happened over the course of those years, which I think was not entirely known or understood by Mr. Melvin, was in 1975, the Commonwealth significantly amended the Zoning Act. One thing they did in those very significant and broad amendments was they, um, they put a time limit on variances for the first time. So variances before 1975 did not have a time limit. Um, this variance does not have a time limit embedded in its condition. In 1975, the state adopted the 75 Zoning Act, and they limit, and you've talked about it tonight, a one-year, one-year uh, lapse period oh, for no so. variances. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Wow. Um, so that's an interesting question, then. If there's no time period as it relates to the variance that was granted, has there been any rulings on that as it relates to an owner's ability to exercise it? There have been some. Um, there was a, a fairly early ruling, um, and it's, it's referenced in uh, Professor Bobrowski's book, if you're familiar with that, with his handbook. He okay. references that. It's the Hogan and Hayes book. It's in there. And the court sort of indirectly deals with that. In that case, they happen to have a situation where an old variance was exercised shortly after the change in the law. So you had 1975, the law changed. Someone said, oh, geez, I've got this old variance. And they, and they pulled the building permit and, or tried to pull the building permit and did their thi do their thing. The court looked at that and said, well, clearly that one-year limitation period, we shouldn't retroactively apply that and say the, the five-year-old variance is now out of luck. Um, and they said that might not be enough. That might not be enough. There might be more protection due to... to um, property owners who have old variances. We're not going to say what that is in this case because we don't have to deal with it. And that, that has sort of been the primary case. Doesn't that make it like a grandfathered lot type scenario? Yes. So we fast forward to today. The, there, is, there has been one ruling that says if you acquired a lot with an old variance on it, this is an appeals court ruling, if you acquired an old lot, a variance with an, 
an old lot with a variance that predated 1975. You didn't know when you happened and you just sort of stumbled upon that variance later and wanted to take advantage of that and you hadn't relied on that in any way, that that might not, that the, the uh, one year limitation might apply to you. So if I bought a lot from one of you, it had an old variance, everyone forgot about it. Five years later, I find this old variance and say, great, I've got a windfall. I've got this old variance nobody knew about. The old owner just forgot about it. That might not apply to me. What I think is still clear under the law, though, that if I'm the original owner and I have that variance and I've held it all this time, that the 1975 change cannot be applied retroactively to take away that variance that's been sitting on the, on the lot all this time. And that's the situation we have today. We have Mr. Melvin. He was the owner at the time. He obtained the variance. He wants to make use of that variance. He wants to see the value from that variance. And I would say this, this variance, the 1963 variance, is still in place, whether you call it grandfathered, whether you, whether you call it not subject to the 1975 change. That, you, did you apply for a building permit and were denied? We did. We did. And, and we knew we would be denied because not only do we need this variance, there have been other changes over the years in the town's requirements that have made that variance that we can't completely use it today and come into compliance. And really, they're wetlands related. I'm going to save that for Phil to explain how those work. But because of um, CBA requirements and wetland setbacks, we can't actually use the 1975 plan. I, I think of this, even though it's not filed as, as it, I think of this application as, a, as an amendment or modification of the old variance. We filed it as a new application like we have to. There's, there's no real way to, to modify this without, because we'd have to notice and because we we're, have slightly different relief. But at the end of the day, we're asking for the same thing, which is we're asking to um, create a complying lot um, that, that uh, complies with the lot area with the 25,000 square feet. And we're asking to keep the um, existing home on a somewhat smaller lot, um, as similar as possible to the, what was granted for relief in 1963. I'm going I'm to let the experts explain that in more detail to the board. Just a quick question. So you're picking and choosing which one you want to use, yeah. is what it sounds like. So you're going to choose the variance from 63, which benefits you, but you're going to change it to amend it to, to, to change it here. Yeah, actually, we've done. I feel like we've done the opposite because what we're saying to this board is we're coming to you with new requests for relief. It, this is relevant history, and I think it's important for the board to know this. I think this variance in the existence in the chain of title here lends to the uniqueness of the situation we have. We are not um, claiming this variance for what we want to do. But it sounds like because you're the wetland law has changed. It but sounds like you're wanting the variance to have the two separate lots, but not how they're actually set up from 1963. Well, let, let me have. So you the, want to just be able to have two lots. Well, let me have the engineer explain how the proposal before you like came to be and what its relationship is to this 1963 plan. I think it'll make more sense when you really see the details and the two of them side by side. But I think it is important to note that the 63 variance exists. It's out there. It's part of the history of this of this property. It's part of the history of the ownership. And then you can judge for yourself how it compares to what we're proposing and uh, how similar it is. Was approved. Were the wetland laws in place, that it, or did they come after the fact as it relates to the ability to use the, the laws? Sure, of course I think they. You have it in here, the variance. You have the, the the variance itself is in the package. Yeah, yeah it's sure. an exhibit to the application. So, is there a change in the wetland laws that? Yes. Yeah, so prior, the, prior after it was approved. Sure. So both the state wetlands act and the town's wetlands bylaw have both been adopted since then. Of course. Um, CBA requirements, which discount for wetlands areas, have been adopted by the town since then, which did not exi exist back in '63. Yes, yeah, the contiguous buildable area requirements. Has, has, has the owner been taxed separately as a separate lot since it was approved? Or do you not know? I do not believe so, but I do not have that information in my package in front of me. Okay. Um, the usually they're taxed. They yeah. passed. Past hearings that we've heard, that when people have lots, they're, they're always getting separate tax bills. They might have been, although I have heard in this very, well, maybe not this very room, I'm having a little trouble orienting myself in the new building, but I've heard from this very board that just because you're taxed does not mean you're entitled to that same relief, that this board has its own view on things. Sure. And the assessor's office would be, their information would also be instructive, um, and I would say it would be Just because they're charging you doesn't mean you can use it. 
<laughs> Doesn't always seem right, but yes. And I've heard that several times. It's tough to explain to clients sometimes. Yeah. Um, so the um, so right now we have um, the application in front of you. We're seeking to do something similar to the 1963 variance. And at this point, I'd really like to turn it over to Phil Christensen, let him walk through the property with you and our proposal, and bring you around the neighborhood a little bit, too, of what the existing uses and structures are out there. Okay. Good evening, Phil Christensen. Um, the bigger one, I think. No, no. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could approach one more time, I've got a package of all our boards here for you. So if you want something a little closer, yeah, sure. Um, you can see right on your desk. I'll throw some more paper on the table for you. Yeah. Is it stuff that was all filed previously or no? I think it's. I think you do have all of it. It just might be a little bit differently. We've got a couple of colored ones that are a little bit. I like color. Oh. Well. Yeah, so just make sure that we have one for Merrill. You spent extra money on the ink. And there's one <laughs> and there's one for the abutters to see, whoever wants to see it. Thank you. And of course I need ten, so that's Yes, we can share. I just want to make sure there's one in the file and one for the abutters. This I don't think we have. Thanks. Now is the one that Phil has on the gas. He certainly helped the guys. You know what, Mr. Brecker? Why don't you uh, why don't you give these to the abutters too? And I'll I'll look on. Okay. Unless they do you have? I just gave that one. Yeah. Give them. Because uh, I can look on with someone here. Do you think yeah, we'll variants? Just give. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Well do you guys? Do the abut? Do you guys have this one? The abutters? Just give them those. Do you have these two? That one. You can give those to them. Because I can look on here. Okay. Okay. All right, ready. Mr. Christensen, nice to sure. see you. Sure. So when we started this, we started with that existing variance plan from 1962. And uh, as Don said, the, the wetlands laws weren't in effect when that was issued. Uh, they didn't come into effect until 1974, I believe, the State Wetland, uh, Wetlands Protection Act. North Andover didn't have any wetlands regulations, and North Andover zoning did not address wetlands in contiguous buildable area. So they were a, a big factor in how we approached this. What we wanted to do was create a 25,000 square foot lot, as was in the original variance plan. Uh, but we had to do it uh, keeping in mind the, the new regulations. And then also, just for your information, we had an existing house that is not compliant in the front and side setback here. Oh. So we had the wetlands flag, got the determination from the Conservation Commission through an ANRAD that was filed with them that the wetlands line is back here. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a wetland here, a wetland offsite here, and an intermittent stream that connects them. So while there's upland back here, it's not contiguous buildable upland. So the existing house has the frontage, but they didn't have the front setback? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, they do not. It's approximately 10 feet and 9 feet. Well, I'm sorry. 9 feet off the front of the existing house, okay. 6 feet off the sideline. And with a 25,000 square foot lot here, conservation not only not only do you have contiguous buildable area, but with conservation, you can't build within 50 feet of a wetland. So to have a reasonable buildable area and still need a sideline set back here, that really determined how we configured this lot. We held it at 25,000 square feet, and then this is the remaining land that would go with the existing house. 
what's proposed for a house here is meets the front and side setback. The lot area meets the requirement. Contiguous buildable area is slightly less, supposed to be 75%. This is 67%. And as I said, there is upland back here, but it's not contiguous to what's in front. Okay. So, you know, we, we played around with it quite a while. As I said, starting with the original variants, uh, and we got to this point primarily because of the wetlands and the 50-foot no-build uh, requirement of the Conservation Commission. And they don't, they're not flexible on that at all. The 50-foot no-build? Yeah. yeah. So what's different, I'm just trying to see, what's different between what was approved and the Originally? 60s in terms of the line was the lot. Yeah, well, the, the line, whole lot is different. Yeah. The line was more like, right, the whole lot more like this. So, yeah. Yeah. so you have the frontage. Frontage isn't the issue. We have adequate frontage. You have adequate on both. Right. You know, in terms of, you could make a lot under an A&R with respect to an approval, approval not required. The issue is, you know, can you meet the other setbacks? Yeah, and then the area on this one. Mm -hmm. So are you saying based on the 1963 that you can't make a conforming lot like you're doing yes, right there? Yes, that's correct because you couldn't meet the side offsets, meet the 50-foot offset and have a reasonable size building area. So what you want us to do is have lot two as a conforming lot? Yes. But you've desecrated lot one into all not well, conforming. Well, I, I think even if you look at lot one, on the original plan, it was still I mean, 16,000. Keep in mind that it's a pre existing structure. Right. Okay, so, so the front setbacks are already determined. The front setbacks yeah. are already determined, right. and, and its appearance uh, from the street really doesn't change. Mm -hmm. What changes is you know, what you can do with this property here. Mm -hmm. What's in the back, it's in the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it really doesn't affect the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, that is important. This is a handout Jerry provided to you. We put together, but it's just mm -hmm. we just took a quick look around the property of the non-conforming lots. So what we have in red, this is this would be the, the lot with the original house on it, but all of these lots of red are non-conforming in terms of frontage and area. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not a single uh, exception to the neighborhood. The neighborhood has many lots like this. Uh, so this wouldn't be most there. most of them pre likely predate the zoning as it relates to the frontage. No, I understand that. I guess I'm questioning why we wouldn't leave the 1963 and allow for a non-conforming since a good portion of the area is already non-conforming. Because you, of the wetland. You just, I think what we're trying to do is have a lot that's got, uh, in either case, this lot would be non-conforming. You have non-conforming on, on setbacks and non-conforming in area, even from the 62 plan. So, so we have the same area on, on both lots. The problem is when you draw this line down through here, the amount of, on the 62 plan, you could have put this house back in here. And you can't do that anymore. It's got to be pushed over into here. And doing that, we had to move this lot line over. So you had a reasonably buildable area. But you can move the lot lines as it relates to an A&R plan regardless. So you, you can go in, because as long as you have the street frontage, you, and you do, because you, it's an oversized lot if I'm looking at your table. Yeah, the frontages exceed you, requirements. You could, you could go in and always move your lot lines. The question then becomes the, the new requirements of the contiguous building area Yes. and where the wetland lines are. Yes. So if somebody were to just want to do a renovation on the existing property, they'd still be coming in. They'd still have to come in here. And seek relief as it relates to the pre Yes, even to put an addition on that, you would have to get relief. Non-conformities. So I'm interested in knowing a little bit about the historic nature of the house and, and well, I don't want, sure. you know, if you're not prepared to talk about that, then I'll wait. But in terms of, because uh, there was a letter from the Historic Commission 
Mm -hmm. Is it so? Is there anything that relates to your presentation on that? Or should no, I hold, should no. I hold that? That'd back? be more. Uh, all right, I'll hold that back, Mr. Rezac. I'll hold that back. But that's really the what we the reasons behind this was to hold the twenty-five thousand as the original uh, uh, variance plan back in the sixties, and the sixteen thousand square feet for the second lot, and just to reconfigure it to try to comply with the new zoning regulation of contiguous buildable area as much as possible and the conservation regulations. So the lot itself, the lines that uh, delineated on that plan, those are wetland lines. Could you talk a little bit about the shape and the topography? Sure, and, and then the soils too, it, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the things is this rises up rather quickly from the street. If you've been by there, you'll see that. And one of the reasons for relief is soils obviously in the, in the zoning act. And the wetlands that we have are created by the soils on site. So without those soils, you wouldn't have wetlands. So uh, the soils create the wetlands, the wetlands create the setback problems, and the contiguous buildable area problems as well. And what's the footprint of the proposed structure? Um, this one is about 1,500 square feet on the lot. Okay. This would be additions onto this house. The additions would comply where they can with the offset on this side. Obviously, we can't do anything with compliance with the existing building. So both of them, the footprints are about 1,500 square feet. So by North Andover standards, that's not particularly large. It's did you say 1,500? On the first floor or uh, yes. total? Is it the two story homes then? Right. So it'd be 3,000? Yes. But that's a footprint about 15. I didn't ask for the square footage, plus I asked for the, the footprint. Garage. Oh, yes. Okay. Plus the garage. Okay. 1,500 of living space plus the garage. So it's a, sta it's a standard, not the end of our 3,000 square foot home, home. Yeah. which isn't small. Those These two are going to be two big houses, two big homes. No, I, I don't think they're big, but. Well, 3,000 square foot homes, not the big old. I think that depends on who, no, that depends on who you're talking to in town, right? Which Why subdivision you go to, you know? Why can't you make it smaller? Keep with the old, the 1963 lines and make the new structure smaller. I, know that I don't think you can do anything with the 1963 lines. It's realistic. Is there any way that you could draw that in for us at some, like, a, to see? Could let's see. Just to see where it is in. in yeah, it's almost the reverse, right? We have. My son's taking improv drama class. Yeah. I think this would be called improv engineering. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to hold you to it, Phil. We realize this. We won't you can even out. pencil it. It's okay. <laughs> We only brought pens. Okay. Yeah. Taxi. It's almost like this. The, on the original plan, if you look at it, you'll see that the dimension here is 142. The dimension on this one right now is 147. So it's pretty much this size moved over to here. And then from some point back here, a line coming down. That's not much straighter. Okay. Yeah, it could be. But what happens is then, if you see where the 50 foot is, you come 20 feet off that line, you're over in here, right? And you come 30 feet off the street, what do you have left? You can build the garage. Basically. It's a new trend, you know, tiny houses. <laughs> That's right. On wheels. <laughs> yep. No, those are not considered. Oh, yes, those are structures. Could you talk about. a little bit, Phil, about the zoning summary table and just... It, yeah, I think if just you talk a little bit about what the existing zoning and requirements are, what's proposed, and sure, it's uh, uh, 125 know. frontage, mm -hmm. uh, 25,000 square foot lot area, 30 foot front offset, 30 foot rear, 20 foot side. Mm -hmm. um, that's, the, today's, that's today's. That's today's. That's today's zoning. Uh, okay. CBA, so the new the CBA is 18750. It says. The, the new lot would be approximately, uh, it has a it meets zoning, it meets frontage or exceeds frontage, meets all the setback requirements, but it's only approximately 67% contiguous buildable 
as opposed to 75 percent required. Okay. Uh, the lot with the original house on it meets frontage, but the area is only 16,000 versus required 25,000. Uh, the new structures put on there will meet zoning offsets, but the existing structures will not. And the CBA is substantially under, I think it's what, 30% maybe? Yeah. A CBA is 52% of required. But again, the frontage exceeds the requirement in the zone. And in no case is really the rear setback a problem on either of these lots. So I th just in terms of the Zoning Act, I think that was an important point to raise. That the, yeah. is the soil does affect the wetlands, and that's one of the relief, one of the reasons for relief in the Zoning Act is soils. Yeah, and that, well, a soil shape topography is is the standard. And I think it's important for the board to understand how, what you have, and what you're proposing, and how it relates to the existing table somehow. Because, you know, especially as it relates to the newer parts of the zoning, CBA and so forth. Questions? Do you want to move on to somebody else? Butch yeah. Rezac, discuss the architectural aspects. Hi, I'm George Rezac. Everyone calls me Butch from Architectural Design Concepts. Office is in uh, 200 Sutton Street. Welcome. Thanks. Nice to be here. So when Jerry called me to look at this, it was to look at the existing building. In the existing building, you know, it's a fine old building. It's not in great shape. It's been added to this little funny addition. It really isn't appropriate for what was there, but it's what was there. So then it came back to make two lots, and that was spills. And we kept going back and forth, back and forth, and end up with uh, taking the existing house, removing this addition. Do you have the floor plan, John? Okay, why don't you put it yeah, the elevation. So this is the existing house, and exists in there now is an addition that comes out here. So we're going to take that off and then add on for a garage underneath. So this is 24 feet by 18 feet deep with a little farmer's porch on the front. And the goal for us was to make this house that's in pretty bad shape, a livable house, and give all the rooms inside a view of the pond, because that's the beauty of the area. And that's why you see the farmer's porch there. Because of the site, and if you go by there, it's a pretty steep grade. You can't really walk up to it. You've got to come in from the side. And the farmer porch allows you to do that from the driveway, uh, so not many steps into the front door. So you actually, the driveway comes in, the garage is under, and you come up onto this porch, and the front door is right here. Basically, it's around 1,500 square feet per floor. This ends up being a three-bedroom house. Uh, all rooms have a view. And then it was, okay, what do we put next to it? And because we wanted to retain the historic structure, we said, well, we need to put up something appropriate for the neighborhood, which is, again, a typical two-story straight front colonial center entrance. Again, the garage is behind this. So from the street, we see no garages. And why don't you put the, the rendering up? This kind of gives you a view of what the two look like. Again, this is the existing section, the farmer's porch, the addition. Garage is behind this addition on this one. This is the new house, the garage is under because of the way the lot slopes. Uh, you know, and the goal was the constriction of the site. We're basically pushing every lot limit line that we can in order to get. You know, as some people may say, a 3,000 square foot house is a big house. You know, to our standards, it's not a big house, but it's who's building it. Um, we had the pleasure of doing Jerry's house, which is across the street, um, that's on the pond, and that house is around 4,000 a little over. 
Now, it doesn't look that big, and that's the issue as you design houses. So they really don't look as big as they are. But any questions I can answer? Well, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about the historical aspect because there was, I know it's an older home, and there was a letter yeah, from the historical The, the historical aspect is we're not going to do anything to the facade other than repair it. And, disrepair, but we left the bays, we left the windows. You know, at one point I wanted to put a porch out here and we felt, no, it changes the texture and the look of the old house. Let's keep it just the way it is with the bays. Uh, so all we're going to do is replace windows, replace siding, uh, replace roofing, bring it back up to today's standards. Uh, inside is the bearing walls are staying where they are. We're moving things around to make it an open floor plan, but the store commission was glad that uh, we were retaining the structure rather than knocking it down and putting something, quite frankly, it'd be cheaper to knock it down and build something new. Renovation of this level is always more expensive because the floors are all over the place. We've got to go in and level them all up, put new, new structure, new bones in the building. And obviously all the HVAC, plumbing, electrical will be ripped out and redone. Everything inside will be gutted. The outside, the historic value we are retaining. What's the percentage of the addition? Percentage? Of the versus the existing, the existing yes. house. The footprint of the new addition, not counting the open porch, is roughly uh, 600 square feet per floor. So it's 1,200. The existing is almost 1,000. So it's, you know, call it 1,000 on one floor. And we're adding 600, so it's about 60, 60 percent. Can you do that? What do you mean? Can you add more than the existing, or isn't there like a? See, I was trying to find this stupid rule in our bylaw that when you do an addition, it has to be a certain percentage. I think you're thinking about a suite. Yeah, I'm not aware. Of of, I'm not aware of it. I mean, I think that <coughs> you know, in theory, there's a there's a builder's envelope and there's a footprint that uh, you work within. Uh, yes, and we're, what we've done with the new addition home, right? is kept it, the setbacks all comply, of course, except the front setback. Can't and do and we that. kept that the same as the existing one. So it's interesting. So the letter that came from the Historic Commission, because I want to wrap my brain around this, mm -hmm. said that um, they were in support of the variance to restore the existing 100-plus-year-old house that's on the property. Mm -hmm. So. Did you have to go before the Historic Commission and talk to them? Is there a particular requirement, you know, in terms no, of maintaining I, I the integrity? I can address that. I'd just like He's to know a little bit really about what's behind, what's behind that. If I may, um, yeah, my wife and I, my wife, support, my wife and I appeared before the... You have to, go, you have to come up to the oh, podium sorry. just so the okay. town and right. Athena can see I, it. I, I'm, I'm Gerald Breaker. This is my wife, Louise Bork. We live at 488 Pleasant Street. Uh, we appeared, uh, we asked for a hearing before the uh, commission uh, and were granted that. We appeared before them. We presented uh, renderings, drawings, floor plans, elevations, etc. cetera. Uh, we answered a lot of questions. I would say the meeting with them lasted to half an hour or so. Um, and, uh, and, and then they wrote their letter. So you presented this. We presented this, okay, exactly. Exactly what you're presenting that is, correct. is what you presented. That is correct. Okay. That, that is correct. So it's, it was sort of a voluntary type thing in terms of going, there's no, uh, it's not in a register no, or anything it's not. like that. No, it's not. In but, terms but, of preserving but, the character of what's there. We live across the street. Sure. And we like what we see there now, and we wanted to uh, maintain uh, the look of that. And uh, we also wanted to make sure, which is the whole purpose of trying to get this variance, that the house would not be knocked down and some much larger, much less attractive uh, piece of work would be done on there because no one's going to keep that house if they can only put one house on that site. They're going to knock it down, they'll build a McMansion, and then all the things that, that, concern, uh, that rightly concern you and concern the neighbors will happen. So we live there. We want to make do what we can. Instead of, instead of coming and complaining about it afterward, and, and while it's in process, we thought, all right, well, let's try to get um, wrap ourselves around this and do the right thing for for the neighborhood. And that was our motivation. 
And Louise, I might add, um, has been a member of the Historical Society and on their board for a long time. So this is not something, we're not Johnny come lately to the historical preservation um, and you know keeping the neighborhoods. We want to try to build something that looks as though it's always been there. In this case, it has always been there, and the new house ought to look the same, and that's what we've tried to do. And, um, and uh, we, you know, we've hired a, a really good architect who knows this stuff, who specializes actually in, in a lot of uh, uh, Butch's work, is in uh, restoration and conversion of historic buildings. So, so we're all trying to do the right thing by the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, just uh, finished up on that historic preservation piece, which is, of course, a, a component, an important component of the presentation. Um, we also have a letter from the Kitteridge family um, that uh, is in the packet I handed out at the beginning of our presentation. They, of course, own the large open space uh, behind um, the parcel of the rear, one of the rear butters, and they do note specifically. So, the, the le there's a letter in your packet um, dated uh, November 2016. Um, we are the owners of the property located at 56 Academy Road and commonly known as the Kitteridge Farm. Our property abuts the property at 271 Stevens Street that is the subject of the variance application. We reviewed the plan Mr. Brecker has submitted for this property and we support the issuance of the Crested Variance. We are particularly in favor of the historical preservation aspects of the plan, have no objection to an additional house in the property, and believe the proposed plan would enhance the neighborhood. Um, and we also, and, and I believe the, the uh, abutter directly across the street has submitted a letter in support that should be in your file. I submitted an unsigned copy of my package um, because that's what I had was an unsigned copy. That's what was provided to me. And there is another um, abutter on Pleasant Street. Um, that also uh, sent a letter of support. But I know there are some folks from the neighborhood that are out tonight. Yep. Um, we're happy to take questions from the board now, or we're happy to take questions afterwards. We certainly want to hear what the what the neighbors have to say about the project and what they have to say about the issues for that property. If the board had exhausted their first go around with you guys in terms of your presentation, mm -hmm. then I'd, I'm happy to switch over to the neighbors and the abutters. But if the board has more questions now, then. And we'll finish that up. So. We tried to bury them in paper in the back corner, but I see they've surfaced from that pile, so I think they should come up and, um, you know, we should hear what they have to say about the project. All right. You guys want to switch on? Sure. All right, so uh, you're under no obligation to speak if you don't want to, but if you want to be heard as it in your statutory abutter, which means you got notice to be here, um, just you're welcome to come up and ask questions to us and and then you know whatever the questions are once you've once you're done we'll give them an opportunity to respond to each of them after the fact okay my name is patty massey i live at 411 pleasant street which is two homes away from the melvin's property okay, okay. on the same side of the street yes i'm on this i'm actually on the same side of the street i'm the first house called pleasant street so it goes steven stevens pleasant mm -hmm. okay so i'm I would have bought the Kittredge property of the same Could that letter was written. Please. So, so this is the Melvin's, yep. this is my house. Okay. So a reference to all of these homes, mm -hmm. um, our older homes, these are all new construction. My home is about um, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So all of these that So your house is relatively new also? Yes. Right. So these non-conforming homes, mm -hmm. I'd be curious to know the date of them being built. Well, it really doesn't matter, but yeah. you're 18 years. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We know where you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Thanks for that. these are beautiful pictures of homes, um, and I'm not opposed to the look of these homes, but this really doesn't represent what, I wouldn't say it looks like what it looks like right now. I'm not saying this isn't beautiful, I'm just saying to I say that it it's look like exactly that. to say that I feel like is a misrepresentation. I think um, that was offered as as a proposal of what they're going to build, right? Just let's clear that one up first. You're not saying that's what's there. No, no but you're saying to look like it is now, is what I heard from it. It's a okay. rendering of okay. what they're going to build. It's a, propo okay. it's a, a proposed, proposed rendering. Yes. Okay. So I actually had written you a letter because okay. I was not supposed to be here in October, when we initially were going to have this meeting, right. and. Um, I'm basically going to read it. At the time, I was very well versed in all of this because I was very intrigued about what was going on in the neighborhood, and I felt like I should speak and okay. say my long, piece. Is it, I don't know if I have it in front of me. I have it. Um, have it? I'm sure you have it, but I'll just—I can read the letter, probably the best, and I can speak to the different 
So basically, on, okay, October, on August 24th, Mr. and Mrs. Brecker presented their proposal for building two homes on two lots um, that Mr. Brecker reported existed on Mr. Melvin's property. And I was surprised at that because I had looked at the zoning map to see that it was actually listed as one lot. Okay. So the 1963 variance was discussed, and after further research, we reviewed the special permit that was approved as discussed 11, 14, and 63, which obviously was a long time ago. Um, my husband and I have lived in North Andover for over 50 years, and we weren't, it was before then. Um, so after further research, we were to find out that that variance was never recorded with the Registry of Deeds. Um, and it was stated to us that Mr. Melvin was under the impression that this did exist as two lots for this entire time, which our question was, he was not paying taxes for two lots to our understanding for two lots. It was only for one lot, okay. as well as the house was listed as a, a single family home when it was being sold. So those just were questions to me if it was discussed as two lots. Why was it being sold as a single family home? Um, as we know, they would, on that um, variance, Mr. Melvin's name was, there was no name on it, but assuming it was Mr. Mel Melvin's name. Um, let me see. So the discussion was um, with the Breckers, they were concerned about the appearance of the neighborhood to have a home that they felt like was appropriate and that the neighborhood would like, as well as he was concerned about Mr. Melvin and being able to provide him, for him to be able to sell the house and have money for his, his aging. Um, I feel like Mr. Melvin was the property owner and he's not asking for this variance. Someone else is asking for the variance. Mm -hmm. So the variance was given to Mr. Melvin, not to Mr. Brecker. Um, so I know that there were two cases that overturned the 1975 Zoning Act. Um, so my questions on those, again, I'm not versed in all of this, but were they the property owners that had that overturned? Was it going to be their primary, re primary residence? Or was it for a real estate investment, which I feel like this proposal is based on a real estate investment? Um, above and beyond the variance from 52 years ago, there are practical concerns for our neighborhood. The present flow of traffic from the old center is quite heavy, and the street is narrow without a sidewalk. Uh, my husband and I are both runners and bikers, and we're actively involved in organizations supporting both, and we're ve very familiar with the volume of traffic that ride, run, and drive through that section of Stevens Street. Any development going to impact, um, would impact that safety. So having a diff an additional home with an additional driveway would be another safety concern as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's a prime route to the high school with many teenage drivers. And at this point, we have challenges pulling out of our driveway. And that, um, it's a pretty, it's kind of a corner there that you'll see. I don't know if you drive by there, but that whole area is kind of a dangerous little corner. Um, you're on the other side of the curve, right? As you go around, that's what you said? Yes. Um, but so that whole thing pond. is a curb. You're on the mill, yeah, mill pond? Mill pond's here. Mill pond's not here, right? I'm just trying to yeah. orient, I'm just yeah. trying to orient myself yeah. again for you. The mill pond's yes, over this, here, right? Yeah, mill pond's Yeah, the yeah. mill pond's up here. Just show, on this map again that you did, this is the Melvin property. Yeah. So that goes is, down by Stevens Pond. Right, and this is where Mr. Brecker That's Mr. Brecker's house. This is where I live. Which is downgrade, yeah, right? Because exactly. that's below, that street exactly. is sunken. And you're here? Yes. Okay. All right, okay. But I'm right at the cross. I don't, that representation. Yep. No, I understand right okay. where you are. Okay. Um, so we already saw an impact on the development of the homes on Stevens Street, but there was a lot of water issues on the side of the road there with some deterioration and problems with the end of their driveways. Um, these homes were built within the guidelines and there were issues. Um, what would happen with another home placed on the property with identified wetlands and the land less than the recommended CBA with any development, there will be changes, and as neighbors, we cannot control the changes of the land and aesthetic changes of our neighborhood. We can, however, ensure our voices are heard. Um, we support people making a living and investing in property, but we also support that the town has zoning rules and regulations to protect our town, its land, and citizens. Um, we feel the Brecker's proposal is one option for the land, but there are many options available to work within the footprint of the land as it exists today. 
this property is being sold. It is a blank canvas for an owner to, to develop. The applicant can modify to accommodate. It's not like they're modifying it to accommodate the need for their family. They're doing this to sell. Um, so I feel like a person who owns this home, we could be back here in two years because they have such a small footprint. They can't make any modification. They're not building it to their specifications. Someone's going to come into this home and they may not like the exact specifications. So because they're so constricted, they're not going to be able to make any changes in their in their home at all. Um, the proposed homes may or may not meet the exact needs of the future owners. Um, so they're already 22.9 or 7% below the recommended CBA. The options the applicant selected do not fit within the network of what the town has set forth as the best for the land. The applicant has implied that if the proposal is not accepted, the neighborhood residents would suffer a hardship not being able to control the design. We were not involved in this proposed design and only communicated with as of 823, long after this process began. To imply that any future development would be a potential hardship to us as neighbors is very presumptuous. Um, so it's unfortunate from the home was built, was built in the very corner of the lot. It's unfortunate that the land is wetlands and it's unfortunate that the land is too small for two lots. Unfortunate as it is, these are the facts. We do not support this variance as it appears only the applicants will really benefit from this project. Um, Mr. Melvin will certainly benefit from the sale of the property, but I do feel like the property can be sold. So whether the property is preserved as a historical home or renovated or a potential single family home is built, we respect that the town has a building development and the neighbors will best, best interest will be considered with potential future proposals. So I just feel like we're saying that no matter what happens in the future, Mr. Breck is concerned that it's automatically going to be bad. I can't assume that, and I don't agree with this variance. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. So the only question that I feel as though that I, you know, we could answer is as it relates to Mr. Brecker being the applicant. Uh, he, that's, he, you know, he's here with the owner's permission and through, through their agent because they have a purchase and sales agreement, so that's allowed. That's something someone can do. But as far as the variance? It doesn't have to be the owner. It can be the owner's agent. There's a valid agreement in place. From the 1963 variance, though? The property, the property is under agreement to, under a purchase and sales agreement. Okay. So he, he, you know, he's filed all the appropriate pa paperwork to be heard, to file the petition and be heard with the owner's permission. That's the only one I can answer. And we can have, uh, if, if there's any, well, maybe what we'll do is, we'll, if you want to keep notes, and if, we'll let everybody talk f sure. that wants to raise issues, and then they can get up after and address each one, you know, do it like that to keep it orderly. Is there anybody else that wants to be heard? Hi. Hi. Come on up, just name and address. All right. Just got these secret files and incriminating folks to pass out first. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to read this. It's just uh, a letter that. Okay. Are you doing better? I'm the about I'm Tom Howlett. I live right Can you show us where? I don't know. Maybe you live, please. Let me see here. Um, is this, this is Melvin's property. Right no, here. Melvin's property is right Oh, okay. I'm going to go the way. This is my property right so here. So you're a director about I am the director about Right, okay. Director about And I'm sorry, your name is Howlett? Howlett, Thomas. What's it between that little white spot between the two houses? Just That is a right away that runs through Kittredge oh, Field to... Academy Road, so Mar uh, to Mary. Mary. Okay, so it's, it's a wooded area. It, well, it's an open field. Okay. Mary yeah, Howell. An open field wooded We area. have the abutters list as Mary. Is that's that? what we used well, to drink in high school, by okay. the way. Why I have that? That's what we used to drink in high school oh, up there. You did the drink in high school. I just got to get it right. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. I'll try that one out. For the record. As long as she wasn't getting the marijuana from Western um, Electric. No. <laughs> a couple of extra copies for the rusty board and the official. Can you give one to Merrill? Can we have one? Sure. Yeah, so the way we do this, you know, I, if, if there's not already a letter in the file, you can give one to Merrill. Okay. And like, make sure the the applicant, we like everybody to see, you know, the applicant, their agents can have one, and yeah. we'll have it for the file. And that's just a picture of the corner of the lot that I'll be talking about okay. uh, relative to the original house. Okay. All right, well, listen, just, to, you know, okay. And then just go over to the uh, podium yeah. and you can... Tell us what you want to tell us. 
Yeah. Excuse me, sir. How old is your home? Uh, almost 20 years now. About 20 years? Yes. Mm -hmm. These are probably out of the bill. Yeah, okay. She's 18, this one's 20, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm basically. Me, how big is your home? Uh, I'm going to guess 2,600 square feet. About 2,600? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm just going to read the letter I just gave to you. Okay? So uh, Chairman Manzi, uh, Vice Chairman McIntyre, and Zoning Board Appeals members, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Thomas Hollett, and I speak on behalf of myself and my wife, Mary Sue Hollett. We have lived at 255 Stevens Street for the past 20 years. In fact, my wife was born and raised on the other side of Kitchens Hill and has been nearly a lifelong resident of the town. Our home is immediately next door to the property, currently under consideration for a variance. We stand in absolute opposition to the variance. We built our home and complied with all the town and state regulations modifying our project to remain in compliance with the rules and regulations set forth to ensure the best for our community. The proposed project has been considered in the past and in August of 2016. Our town's own building inspector rejected the building permit for the property, citing the 63 variance uh, that was never recorded at the Registry of Deeds as required and therefore not operative. And Mr. Belanger's notes that the subdivision requested Attorney Becker to completely different uh, from itself and voids the claim of subdivision. The tree line that separates our home and the land in question is marked by 30 to 40 large pines, oaks, birch, maple, and approximately 40, 50 years old. Those trees are home to many animals and provide shelter to hawks, deer, turkeys, coyotes, and other forms of wildlife. Given the recent drought conditions, now we're going back to September when we did have a drought, um, I'm concerned about the dis disruption of weakening of the root systems for these trees throughout any excavation in the proposed addition. The root systems may be at risk of existing homes in less than seven feet of the lot line, and the root systems for these trees likely extend well beyond the proposed addition. These existing trees may become unstable and fall, landing on either the existing home on 271 Stephen Street or our home or elsewhere, creating a hardship and changing the character of our property and the environment. The water drains off of Kittredge Hill to the back of the lot and then between 271 Stephen Street to the south side of the property and I assume under the street to Stevens Pond. With the, prospected, with the pros proposed project, drainage will shift, creating further erosion and alter the drainage to other properties, especially on the proposed lot. The natural flow of the drainage will be disrupted by any proposed new construction. The proposed project includes an additional 1,000 square feet of home on what would be an undersized lot if the subdivision is granted. And the other homes on the same side of the street along Stevens Street and Pleasant Street out to Osgood Street on that same side of the street are approximately one acre lots as it is. A subdivision would change the character of this side of the street. That would prevent the other homes, oh, excuse me, uh, what would prevent any of the other homes on the side of the street from subdividing and doubling the population of the area if such a precedence is set. The property was advertised by realtors as a single family home built in 1880. It is not advertised as a subdivision with building and expansion potential. The signed purchase and sale dated February 24, 2016 was an agreed upon purchase price of $460,000, which is greater than the current year's assessed value of the property of $385,300. The property was listed at $450,000 almost a year ago, and the purchase sale is void should the variance be denied and is based on the potential hardship of the current owner. Attorney Breckett told me he was interested in improving the neighborhood by developing two $800,000 homes that seemed like a significant business transaction to me and in no true hardship to the interested developer. Thank you for your consideration, and I hope that you will ensure the integrity of the neighborhood and enforce our current regulations. I appreciate this opportunity. Okay, thank you. I'll adopt that in the record. Uh, anybody else? Are there any other rebuttals? Are there any other rebuttals? Okay. 
Mr. Smolak, are you in the butter? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm not in the butter. Uh, John Smolak uh, here, not as capacity as in the butter or the attorney, but the uh, son-in-law of the owner of the property. And I just want to say that, uh, as you heard, uh, my father-in-law had lived at this property for, with his family for an excess of 50 years. Always thought there was a lot there. Uh, you know, never looked at it closely over the years, and that's what no other people would have done. Um, but, you know, as a result of uh, significant health care issues that have occurred, uh, my father-in-law is going to be 90 this year, and um, so there is a necessity to have proceeds to be able to take care of his needs in assisted living or a nursing home for the remaining years that he has, so he has some sense of dignity over the remaining years that he has. So um, I've heard the... I appreciate, uh, I know, I appreciate that. Yeah. We just, I mean, I think that... Um, I want to try to keep it to the merits of the hearing sure, sure. as it relates to the soil shape right. and topography of the land. Right. But I appreciate the history. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to get too off track. No, no. Uh, what I did want to um, respond to was one issue in terms of what can be built out here, and um, yeah. you know, obviously there are there are other things that could be built here that are a lot more intensive, if you ever wanted to. Um, okay. I mean. Uh, we're not looking at something from the comprehensive permit law or anything like that, but I mean, I've, I've built 40 units on less acreage uh, or permitted that in downtown Gloucester. So I mean, we're not in downtown Gloucester. It's not what my father-in-law would ever have wanted. He would have wanted something exactly like this to, to minimize any impact to the neighborhood and to at least have some sort of a reasonable return and uh, be able to take care of his health care needs. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to be heard that's a directly affected? So why don't we do this? Um, I don't know who wants to be the point guide going through trying to address the different issues. Attorney Bornstein, you seem to be <coughs> well suited to All right, try so to address the issues that are raised. <coughs> Sure, and I do have at least, um, I think there's at least two technical issues. I'll probably call both Phil and then and the Butch up to comment sure. on briefly. I know we've been going a long time, and I do appreciate the, the attention the board's put into this matter. Sure. Um, um, number one, I did, I did hear in, in both the, the uh, um, neighbor's presentation, and I appreciate that, and it's always good for people to come out and comment on what's going on in their neighborhood. That's the right, that's, you folks certainly understand that. I think it's good that people come out and do that. Um, I did hear some words used like, this lot is a blank canvas. You can, you can do whatever you want. Why do you have to do this? Um, that a neighborhood can't control aesthetics. You can't, can't control aesthetics. Um, and that, uh, and I heard some concerns about trees and wildlife being disturbed by this proposal. Um, but I, I do want to make it clear that it, the, the difference here isn't between what exists today and the proposal you have before you in the variance application, because th those are not the two options. The thing that exists today will not exist in its current form for very long. I'm a land use attorney. I'm a real estate attorney. I do this many, many nights a week. And, um, and you see it in town here, too. Um, I do work in, in Lexington and other towns. And this, is, this lot is a perfect teardown candidate, a perfect teardown candidate. Um, you got an old house, small, close to the road. You can tear that thing down easily. You got a big conforming lot otherwise. Um, you could put a good size house and tear down that, tear down the existing house very quickly. Um, you clear all the trees out right up to the property line, except staying out of the wetlands buffers. You go um, 25 feet from the wetlands, do your clearing. Um, you could blow out this lot, put a big house. It's a great area. It's got views of the pond. It would, it would, I suspect it would support a very large home. Um, you see it in other areas in North Andover. You're seeing that. Um, you know, we see that in Andover, my town, teardowns are becoming very popular. If you go a little farther afield, um, you go to towns like Lexington, this, this wouldn't have, this would already be torn down and there would be a big house built there. They spend every town meeting talking about how to prevent teardowns. Um, and I know this town and, and Andover both spend a lot of time thinking about preserving our historic structures, preserving, and we, that word character is thrown out all over the bylaw. What does it really mean? Can um, I just ask you, do you mean tear down and put one big house on the lot? Yeah. Is that what you're referring yes. to? Yes. Can you not tear it down because it's 100 years old? Don't you have to do some waiting time? Yeah, but according to this, it's not plus, under the historic but, register. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's not under historic but register. But it's over 100 yeah, years, right. so there's some kind of funky right. gray area. I think you'd have you're to not precluded yeah, from going through wait. the process, yes. right? Correct. Yeah. It's you'd a year something. It's a year waiting. They have to wait. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Can I ask you just a quick question mm -hmm. right before you, and I want you to answer all the issues that the abutters raised, but just as it relates to, 
this white area here that's directly uh, this is the subject property you know they all seem to be similarly shaped and sized different but similar but is this is this white area that down, down, down. Is that also an abutting property? That is trustee's property. Yeah. It's the uh, funny trapezoid down here. That's the front. Yeah. That's Ooh. trustee's. So the trustee's reservation, um, their property comes out and has some frontage here. Trustee's. In, As does the other one above it, too. So in all, between those two. And the white property yeah. there in, yeah. on the other side, is that all trustees of reservation? No, there's some trustee's property and there's some Kittredge property out there. So they're both. You know, large. Um, so, Kittredge, the letter. The letter. The letter. Knows about the Kittredge. Right? Oh. <laughs> Kittredge. Okay. Kittredge. Keep it honest here, Phil. Kittredge is the parcel, the large parcel. Ah, you're in the trustees. No, this is the Kittredge. This is all the Kittredge parcel, yeah. and this. Uh, this is Kittredge. Yep. And uh, this is Kittredge, and this is this here is trustees. So the trustees and there's there's a path and all that goes up okay. to Academy Road, and this is the the Kittredge Farm, which is an active farm. Okay, I just wanted to understand that, so I don't want to I don't want to derail what you're doing. I was just excuse me. Where does Mr. Bricker live in this? He lives right there. Green on the corner, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Geez. That was the house that was redone. Yeah, that's the no, house that, that, that was a brand new house. We built that 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. So I was, I was really trying to make the point, and I'm sure the, the board has it now, which is that the, the trade-off here is not to preserve the, you know, so the deteriorating home in the corner of the lot that's out there now. The trade-off is between what you have a fairly creative approach to the future of this, of this land versus what could be done as of right. And sometimes, you know, I did hear the sentiment, well, we, we stuck to the rules and regulations. To, to ensure what's best for the community. And this board, and it's, it's the Board of Appeals that has variance power, sometimes the rules are not actually what ensures the best for the community. Sometimes the common sense approach and, and creativity and bringing something a little um, less usual in front of the board might, might do something better. And I would say that's, that's possible here. Now, next month I might be you know, working with a client who's going to be tearing down the house, and I'm going to tell you the exact opposite. This great big house is perfect, but we probably won't be here because we won't need your we won't need your approval, and we won't the the neighbors won't be um, contacted in August uh, because they won't know until the shovel goes in the ground that the house is going up probably because there's no public notice, there's no there's no process to that, and I think you have an opportunity here to sell a 135 year old home. Um, is, is, this, is an asset of the town. It's private property. Private property owners can do what they want, but it is an asset of the town, the aesthetics of that. And to have, well, let's call him a developer, to have the developer who lives across the street, and he's not a developer, but we can call him that, um, come in with this kind of proposal, this is something that should get real consideration by the board and, um, and real thought, and, and really compare this to the alternatives and what is usually done with a piece of land like this. Mm -hmm. And What's done, what's usually done with a piece of land like this, does not have some of the community benefits that I think you're seeing in this project. So there, there was a question about stormwater and concern about stormwater, completely legitimate concern. I'd like to have Phil hit on that, yep. and um, and then the disruption to the tree roots and just how close to the property line we might be doing work. I think maybe Butch might be able to hit on that, or maybe Phil too. I think more. But, I think the, what the proposed envelope is is yep. probably appropriate. Just a little follow-up on that teardown business. One of our clients does a lot of work in Reading now. It's not uncommon for developers here to buy a house for 350, tear it down, and sell a house for 1.2 million on the same lot. It's getting to the point now. I've heard some people are paying up to 450 thousand dollars for a teardown and build a big house in its place. But it is pretty common. With regard to the the drainage, uh, you know, at this point. We're not into engineering design on the lot, as you can imagine. We're not looking at stormwater. But it is something that has to be looked at to get a building permit. And for us, if this were approved, that's something we would look at. And one of the issues, too, is we 
as they look at it, with this wetland up here on the Kittridge property, intervene the stream and then flows down here. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing anything in this area. So we're not disrupting this flow. Obviously, changes here will change drainage patterns. One of the things we do on all houses is we put in uh, seepage pits in the ground. So all of the water from the roof, which would ordinarily be runoff, goes in the ground. Uh, in some cases, what well, we do uh, calculations on existing and proposed drainage uh, to see what kind of runoff problems we would create. And if necessary, we put in pervious pavement or we put in leaching catch basins. So it's something that's addressed uh, constantly in, on development these days. And it's not something that will be ignored. It is an important issue, uh, and it will be addressed. It's something that has to be done. You, you, have, to, you have to do it on all projects. Uh, there's limited, limited amount of any clearing near, near the property. Obviously, we're not building here. This is an existing house, so we're not cutting down anything over through here. Up in here, there's probably some grading around in here that will be required. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other lot, obviously, we're not cutting down anything near above this property. Uh, so I think there's minimal lot disturbance. Uh, and again, that's something we're not looking at at present because so heard, we're not at that phase of the project. I heard a question raised, one of the, the second about her, about the, the woodland area and the tree roots and so forth. And I'd like you to try to address that as it relates to what you're proposing and where you can work or not work within the conservation line. Okay. Within the 50 yeah. foot. Because That's I think point. we can't work, we can't do anything within the 25 foot zone. So, so I think, you know, this is 25 feet from the wetland. So here back, we can't do any work. And if you look at it, it's probably 40% of the pro of the total property area. We can't even disturb that area. So that has to remain natural. From all of that, you know, and so the structure go. You can't put a structure beyond the 50. You can't put a structure beyond the 50. But you can you can landscape up to the 25. Landscape up to it, but beyond the 25, you can't do anything. And where, where is that as it relates to those lines? Because I just can't see it okay. from here. So that's the 50. That's the 50. And that's the 25. And that goes all the way down the Stephen Street, comes back up through here. So all of this up here will remain natural, can't change. We, we can't go in there. And you can't even get a permit. You know, if you're dealing within the buffer zone, uh, for instance, we will have to file with conservation for this because we'll be within 100 feet of a wetland. And that, that when, that's when the drainage issues will really be addressed. But with conservation then, because we get reviewed by them, they're going to look closely at what we do in terms of the vegetation. And while you're allowed to disturb up to the 25, sometimes they, they're more restrictive than that. They'll look at the property and decide, well, you know, this case, maybe it's better you just have a 10-foot backyard, not 25 feet off there. So uh, th there's a lot more uh, regulatory procedures to go through if we get beyond this step. All right. Yes, sir. Sure. I didn't bring this up. Excuse me. Yeah. I didn't bring this up when I was reading my statements previously, but you're talking about the building on the wetland side. My property runs seven feet away from the corner of the original house that Mr. Melvin uh, lived in there. On the right there by the north uh, symbol? Right in here. Yep. The that's, the, that's the lot line you were showing us on your picture. That's looking from uh, Stephen Street along the lot line, and it runs through that large pine tree towards the back of the house. So you're looking at yep. that window coming out about six or seven feet from that line. All right. He wants to also put an, another structure about 16 feet off of my lot line, which is still not conforming to the 30-foot setback. And the trees that run through the lot line there have root systems that most likely run down through the area that they may be excavating. And any excavation could damage those roots, change the uh, water feeding system to those trees, maybe limiting the amount of water, killing the trees, or you know, well, it's up to anyone to guess what it could it's be. It's a side setback, right? That's a side setback. It right, was, yeah. It's a 20-foot side setback. And that's less than 20 feet. That's less than 20 feet. And 
and in terms of the sofa. proposed garage. The, the garage or so the existing home. The existing home that's already there. It's correct. Um, I mean that's there. That's there. That's the way it goes. So, was it, so but as so it, as a new structure, the addition he should be conforming. With a further setback, I would have to think. Your issue is the four feet. Oh, is it f uh, um, what no, the, the, the setback from the garage. Yeah, I just can't see that number again. I got to look from 18.3 as opposed to 20. And the trees along there run right through that whole lot line there. It's some very large trees, and you can see how the root systems grow down into that area where any excavation, even if it gets filled in later. Yeah. Um, so you're, that side, that side of of the scope of work. Is outside of the 50. Correct. It's outside of the 50. Um, on your on your lot. That's, that's. Is that your lot? That's your lot. This line. is my lot right through here. Yep. So that's still too close to the lot line, relative to where he wants to put that garage. Okay. Um, I understand. So again. So that bothers the, the you. The tree line that and any you. damage to the trees yep. um, could result in those trees falling on a new house there. Or onto my property. So can I ask you just a question? I'm just going to ask sure. you. I mean, I'm just going to ask you because it's a difference of one and a half feet, right? Yeah. But you think that one and a half feet is significant in the context of the trees? It might be. Okay. How do I'm we just know? asking. Yeah, it is, might that, be. That's your position. It's my concern. Okay. Uh, I might have other questions. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I understand. So, Mr. Christensen, do you see the issue there as it relates to? Yes. Uh, I don't know if that's a footprint issue or an architectural issue. If we, if issue. we had to, we could move that over a foot and a half if that's if that solves the issue. Uh, another thing we could do too is have an arborist look at the area and consider if those distances are are, are a problem. I mean, you know, I had an office on Canosa Avenue in Haverhill, and uh, there was a tulip tree between me and the neighbor the dentist, yep. and he went through. And it was a huge tree. Took off half the roots, and I was sure that that tree was gonna, you know, sure. die. That was in 1987. Still there, <laughs> hasn't been affected, and all the roots are cut off one side. So, well, I guess I'm not. But we what's can, significant? To that, I, mean, I don't know if it's significant. But I think but what's should, relevant is if someone, you know, if they were just going to put an addition on that home, mm -hmm. the existing home, it would be 20 feet. Right. right, absent additional relief requested. So that's what they could do by right. Right. So we'll look to move it, and also we'll check to see what trees are in that area, too. So that's important. Wouldn't that be a conservation issue anyway? It's not a zoning issue. No, no it's conservation. Of, well, yeah. it's with. No. Yeah, that I might mean, just be with. They come in and say what they want and what they don't. We're here with variants, not roots. No, they have within a hundred within a hundred feet of a wetland. You have to file a notice of intent, but it's outside of the fifty feet well, in terms yeah, it of. Would, it'd be within, hmm. It would be within the conservation jurisdiction, but I think we, we can move that to be off, meet the twenty foot offset. See the jurisdiction as with respect to the filing, but as yeah. it relates to the structure, it's it's no. outside of the. I it's mean, right. I understand. I understand the issue. I understand the issue. It's certainly, certainly relevant. Yeah. Well, uh, did, were there other questions that were addressed at that point? Or? I believe I have addressed the questions I heard from the uh, from the neighbors' comments um, on the tree issue. I will uh, repeat what uh, what Mr. Brecker has told me. He has every interest in retaining as many of those trees along the property line as possible. He's not sure. interested in clearing. The, uh, the natural buffer between that property and Mr. Howlett's property. Mm -hmm. um, and he has, would certainly be using a, a certified arborist to review those trees and, and um, you know, someone with qualifications of any the cutting needs to be done. Well, the, birds, the board's heard a lot tonight. I think there's, a lot, there's been a lot for us to digest. I know it's been a long time for you guys procedurally, um, you know, getting the merits of your petition heard. I mean, I, I'm thinking that based on a lot of what I've heard and what I've seen, I probably want to take another ride by and kind of orient myself with with what the neighbors have addressed and what you guys have raised tonight, you know, to, to be better prepared for another meeting, which is only in about a week and a half. Um, that would be that would be my suggestion because I just want to orient myself a little bit better. But that's that's only one it's only one thought. Um, I don't know what anybody else's opinions might be. 
I, I agree that um, this is this is right for continuance before we move into that. Um, I think I'm going to take a turn and open my mouth for a little bit, unfortunately. Um, I think that there is, I'm not even sure actually where to start because we've got a number of, number of issues swirling around. Um, there's a lot to like about this project and there are certainly things to be extraordinarily careful about. Um, one of the things that I want to be careful about and like at the same time, um, you know, I think Mr. Howlett put words to this, um, as, as well as the other reporter, the Massey, who uh, I, want to, I want to retain the character of the neighborhood as well. While that's not necessarily the purview of the planning board, that's certainly part, something that runs part and parcel with uh, evaluating a project for relief. The character of the neighborhood is something that we have to play defense on. And now then you put words to that by suggesting uh, if this is torn down, there is nobody in this room that is going to like what goes on that lot. I, I believe that with from the top of my head to the, to, the, to the tips of my toes. So if that's the case, then this is what is before me that will allow me to play defense and preserve the character of the neighborhood. Because the drawings, the renderings, uh, are, they're, lo you know, they're lovely. Renderings ordinarily are lovely. Uh, but being able to retain the old structure uh, have a have a farmer's porch, which is you know shockingly charming. I like and lovely then, too. <laughs> uh, and then put a, a structure that is similar, though not identical, uh, is something to me that is a step in the right direction toward preserving the character of the neighborhood. The things that I the thing that I like least, however, and the thing that I I get hung up on, and you know, this is this is one of my issues. I have two issues ordinarily, and it's trees, which we've talked about a bunch, and we're going to have an arborist. There's a commitment for that already, so that part is I'm not going to say I'm assuaged, but at least encouraged that we're going to address that thoughtfully. Uh, but the second is the shape of the lots. The uh, I can, I absolutely appreciate that we have you're starting with a very challengingly shaped lot in the first place, and that what we've done, however, is. The new lot is given you know, some, some sense of normalcy, for lack of a better word. It's clumsy shorthand I'm using here. But the, the existing structure on lot, I'm, I'm using lot one, I'm not sure, the, the lot one, just that hatchet shaped thing makes me anxious for some reason. Uh, and I appreciate that there are wetlands in here. There's probably grade in here. There are any number of issues that my small mind doesn't comprehend in the in the brief presentation and time that we've had together. Uh, but if we, for one of my pet issues, is the shape of that lot need to me needs to be more square somehow, and I, I largely leave that to the experts. And I sit here and I move move things around. I'm feeling like lot the house on lot two can move to the left you know, an inch and a half and just kind of tuck in at the 50 yard line or the 50 foot line. Um, uh, there are probably reasons why it can't. I'd certainly be interested in hearing them. But if we can move the structure on lot two to the left, uh, um, you know, with an inch, inch and a half, we create another problem, of course, because every dial you turn, uh, move, you know, there's, there's, a, there's another whistle, there's another lever that, that needs to be changed as well. So if in, in my fantasy world, the structure removed an inch to the left, now we've got a uh, you know a front setback issue, and the the question that comes to my mind now we're in the trade offs. Would I rather create a front setback issue in order to reshape lot one into something that is we're never going to get it normal, but it's something that is less than conical, comically conical to me. Um, Mr. Cook, can I jump in for one sure. minute right there? And I. I I do a lot of historic preservation permitting as well, and I've done some here in the downtown area. Um, and I love to watch architects work, and a lot of times I wish I was an architect. But one, one issue, and maybe Butch can comment on this, that I see when, you, when you're doing this, when you're citing a new home that's meant to jive with an old home, is they like to have the relationship to the street somewhat similar. So our new home actually has a relationship to the street that's governed by today's setback which didn't exist back in the late 1800s when this was built, when everyone built close to the street. So I think there is justification to pull this home further to the street 
to have a similar relationship to the street to the existing home, I think it would actually add to the historic character. This house would look like it had been there a long time if you built it like that, and not only built it like that, but oriented it like it would have been oriented in the, 18, in the 1800s. That means it gets pulled closer. That also means you guys have to give us another variance. And of course, when you pull it closer, it fits nicely into this little bend in the 50-foot uh, well and setback. So I think that's a good observation you're making there. It's, it's a possibility, but you have to be. Th th there's another variance in the list, and part of the the, the goal here was to re make that list small. That might not be the best way, though. But uh, entirely appreciated. And I'm, I'm just kind of talking out loud here to art to, to articulate that my punchline is I would give up a couple of feet on the front setback in order to reshape lot one and perhaps give a give a little breathing space between the two houses. Um, but that's, by and large, that's certainly just one voice. Can I say something? I wish you would. I think he's, I think he's done a perfect job. I, I think you're beating it to death. I think you're beating it to death. I, I wish I got that every night. Job doing this. Okay? I, I mean, you're talking about moving an inch, two inches. Look at you got, however acreage is there, you're moving the, everything conforms. I, he's done a nice job, okay? Like, and I agree with what you said. You want to preserve the neighborhood, the character of the neighborhood. And Mr. Brecker, is that his name? Mm -hmm. I mean, he has an option to buy this property. We don't give him a variance. He doesn't buy it. The owner over there, he sells it to some developer, comes in, knocks it down. What happens if he builds a contemporary on the house? How are these neighbors going to like that if they built a contemporary? Okay, I think well, what they're proposing, what I would like to see is some kind of guarantee that these are the houses that are built. Something in writing that this conforms with the character of the neighborhood. Not somebody building a contemporary that some developer can, who would have the right, wouldn't even have to come here. He can just do it. Right, so he's doing the neighborhood a favor, the way I see it, and he's doing the town a favor. Okay, instead of talking about an inch here or there, let's do it and get it over and done Ellen, with. Ellen, you don't have to convince me. That's how I opened my statement. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're going when inches so, here, inches there, right? I'm not sure what's entirely what you're exercised about, Alan, but I mean, I've made that argument that you like just made. To death. So I am asking to move it an inch on the plan, which is likely something like 20 or 25 feet in what's real life. What's it going to cost them to move the damn so, thing an inch? Probably <laughs> nothing, quite frankly. A pencil. <laughs> so, I, I, again, so, I'm not going to an inch the I other way. Right? What you're all excited it. about, so Alan. Call, I love the energy, so call, but I think it's shockingly misplaced at this point. Then you can no, I've said my piece. <laughs> Everyone knows where I'm coming from. Okay. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> all right, so I'm just trying to keep us. I'm just trying to. Keep us focused. Right. If, if, keep if, us focused. If we can have a little fun and entertain the gallery, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure <laughs> what else we're doing here. Clearly, we're entertaining. Yeah. So, I'm enjoying it. Uh, all right. So, I mean, that's 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 where that's where Paul's coming from on this. I have to say, I I agree with Paul, and I I also think moving it over that inch, um, it creates more separation between. Based on the rendering, it it looks like the houses are somewhat close, and I understand the reasoning behind that. But again, I'm with Paul. I think I'd rather give up some in the front um, to be able to create better forming lots and more space between the two properties. So I disagree. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> what I feel is the house should, instead of keeping the, the law conforming, make the house a little smaller instead of moving it over an inch and adding another variance to the long list of variants. Perhaps take a pencil and move a little line, make the little, make both of them just a tad smaller, you know, 2,600 square feet as opposed to 30, you know, 3,000 or 3,200, whatever you're doing, just so there's a little space in between both of them, which is another Options. option. <laughs> we like your options. Well, you know, I, I, but in this way, you don't have to take any more variances because yeah. I don't like to give variances. No. I don't necessarily, you know, I can see both sides of this. I understand the no, neighbor's no. concerns most definitely, I but I certainly understand what you can do um, by right. I and it was things could be, could look a lot worse for the neighborhood. So I definitely agree with Paul. I think character of the neighborhood is important. Um, I understand how the lot conditions are driving the need for the variance uh, in terms of with respect to the old variance. 
I know there's issues with that that the neighbors raised, but and, you know the character of the neighborhood I think is important. Um, I'm not as concerned about the front setbacks. That's the house, right? If you choose to come in with something that maybe appeases, you know, the size, uh, or some of the members of the size that you know that's your choice. Um, I'm more concerned, and you have the frontage. The frontage I think is important. Um, I'm more concerned about making having something that looks like it's supposed to be there. Clearly, I'm concerned about what the neighbor said about the trees and his. Uh, the variance on, on his lot line and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, you know, generally I think you've, you've taken a, a lot of time and you've evalu evaluated a lot of conditions um, to come up with something that you feel is best for the neighborhood, Mr. Brecker. I understand that. You know, I liked the fact that the, uh, the, his the historical commission was sort of on board with that in terms of the character, but you know, I do want to make sure that you can address as many of the concerns of the neighbors, knowing that Mr. Brecker is in the neighborhood and in Abutta, but the ones that are in close proximity, I think also we should try to address what you can as far as that goes. I mean, our next meeting isn't very far, which is why, you know, it's two weeks. So, I mean, it's certainly something you could be docketed on if, if, uh, if you're able to do that and give everybody a chance to go look at it and just digest it a little bit more. Um, but that's your choice. Yeah, for uh, for timing. So, I think we could address the left side of the table and the major concerns there. Um, the right, far right side of the table, we've already addressed. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> Ellen, I'm going to keep trying with Member McIntyre as hard as possible to hear the same thing I heard tonight from her neighbor. Um, so I think we can. I think we can address several of those things. Um, I I don't want to sort of solve one problem just to make another. But what we've heard tonight, I, th I think we can work with it. When there's some improvements we can make, we can, uh, and as far as making sure you get what you see, um, we can propose a condition on that and the board can play with that and, and um, well, that's, that's cut it up. Important. But I can, I can uh, submit a proposed condition because this, this is what we want to build. And we also, I think from Mr. Brecker's opinion, after he sells it, he wants it to look like this too. So I think it would be to his advantage actually to have a firm condition. For me, that would be numero uno. Yeah, <laughs> is that we is we get what we're seeing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and your 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 variance application of variance instructions already demand that house plans be part of the submission, and those are incorporated. And when your but when you your variance happens, says build, but you know what happens, you know, and, and to Alan's point, you know, when construction starts, things happen, mm -hmm. and you have to make sure in terms of the character of the neighborhood sort of what's getting cut and what isn't getting cut. And that really needs to get spelled out, I think, yeah. in terms of, you know, preserving what's there. Because all too often, you know, a day can go by and half the lot's gone. Yeah. You know, and nobody knows. So, and I realize that a lot of that is governed by conservation. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not concerned about beyond the 50. I'm a little, you know, I'd like to have a little bit better understanding about our side of the 50 mm -hmm. in terms of what you're proposing. Well, I think we could and provide some detail on that. Inside. We could we'll provide some detail on that, incorporate into the plan. That would be that would be referenced in the condition. We could certainly draft a condition that's going to ensure the uh, the homes that like you to, see. I'd like to see get. it on the plan. You know, not, not, condition is one thing, but but what a neighbor can see and what we can see on a plan in terms of like a no cut zone mm -hmm. where this isn't going to be disturbed or yeah, something we, we along those lines I think is very important because that's what gives people their comfort level. Yeah, we haven't showed you limited work. I don't believe in these plans yet, but we can. Um, and we could we could probably show a little bit of land, you know reserve landscaping. Yeah, we, we can address those concerns, absolutely. Um, buffer, on the, maybe a buffer zone is a better word. You know, I don't know zone. if it's a buffer or a no cut, but you know, the, yeah. you know that existing structure to that gentleman's lot, mm -hmm. it's it's tight, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I realize if you weren't here and somebody was in doing construction, mm -hmm. maybe they could just go cut what they wanted anyway. I don't know, but I think that's important to see. And, and you know, I know that the neighbors want to make sure that, that the area looks as close to as it's as they've always known. Yeah. And maybe we could have a little more dialogue with the folks who spoke tonight and see if we can. Um, there sound like some pretty strict op opposition to it, but you know, you, you talk to folks, you always can come up with maybe there's some things that make it a little more palatable than we've heard tonight. It's helpful um, for us to know if that's if that's a dialogue that can happen or not. Yep, absolutely. You know? I do have one 
bit of irony is your April, your, your meeting coming up very shortly actually falls basically right on top of, um, of one of the Jewish holidays. So we are not going to be able to continue to April. So we'd ask the indulgence to continue us to May. Is that, that, that's what everybody wants to do? Do you want to take a minute and conference on that? No, I, I think you're not going to be here either, Paul. Louise and I are simply not available on the 11th. I don't even know which one it is. Yeah, so if it's... <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's the way I look at it is it's your, it's your petition and it's, it's your hearing. So if that's, if that's something you're asking for, I'm sure the board would indulge you. I just don't want to put it out any longer than it needs to be. No, I appreciate to you, ask, you know, being willing to have us in, in about a week and a half. Um, it's just the way the dates fell again, and um, we've been uh, we've been at this since a long time. So going over to the May meeting is, I mean, is do, satisfactory do you, to us. It also gives everyone a chance to get out there, see the property, drive by, gives us a little more time to work up some plans and conditions. A week is personally, quick turnaround because time. of how long this has taken, you know, and I'm one humble member. I'm not opposed to looking at a special meeting if the board is inclined to do that for you because it's taken so long. Um, if, and, you know, but if the board is not in favor of that, then I'm not going to put my neck out there. And it's my birthday month. Oh, no. The whole month? In April. April. <laughs> the whole month? I mean, year. April, I mean, you know, we could do something maybe that, you know, the third the third week in April yeah. if, if people want. I, I think it makes April's a difference going to have some big things on that meeting. No, so. I'm talking about a different meeting. I'm not adverse to filing another meeting. Pardon. For this hearing. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, but I don't care. You've all. So I'm just saying to pack another thing in April. Well, most of the other land use boards meet twice a month. You know, we, we meet monthly for whatever reason. So, you know, I'm, it doesn't bother me, but you need a quorum. I can call a meeting, and if nobody shows up, then. Doesn't, doesn't help you. Um, where I, we we definitely appreciate the offer. We don't need necessarily a special meeting if you don't. I mean, if you okay. really want a special meeting, if, nope. you, if if you want to deal with that schedule, that's great. We'd be ready. Nope. Um, I, don't, I don't feel compelled. We're uh, we're patient. I believe the owner is represented. Will be patient enough to a May meeting. You lost what that the snow date. So you know that's why we did this. No, one. we we have a town meeting. When's our meeting in May? Because we have town meeting in May, just remember that, because it's not our regular well, day. We, I don't remember Is the it? date of the May meeting. May 9th? Really? Oh, the meeting. Not our meeting. meeting, not town meeting, our meeting. I don't May 9th. 9th. Okay, so which is our regular meeting? So we didn't get bumped this year. So May 9th. Okay. You just gonna check that date real quick? Sure. And May 16th is town meeting. Okay. That's nice. We didn't get bumped. Well, just wait till they come back in the room. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I just want the petition to be in, just to keep it fair. You know. We try real hard to be fair. No, no, you can't ask one either because if I'm not taking hers, I'm not taking yours. Okay. Is that a test of some kind? Are you testing me? Okay, ma'am, what's your question? It's all, it's all in evidence. The board, well, the board has taken everybody's, to this point, it's an open public hearing, and they've submitted uh, what they believe is their side of what they want to do. You folks have talked about yours, and we, we, you know, we're taking it all into consideration. Sure. Who, oh, okay, yeah, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to clear, so as we go off and do design, I happen to like this idea of bringing it forward because the streetscape, all the houses are closer to the street. But the goal here was to fewer variants as possible to that one. So we were determined by the setbacks who were sitting on every one. So if you're saying and considering, gee, for the neighborhood's sake, 
move that house to the left, which means we have to bring it closer. But that also allows us to take that garage and move the garage away from the sideline because the property line is going to move. The trouble is, I don't think you have, yeah, did you advertise the front? We have not advertised front on that lot. But so if we no, went to May, we need to. Right. So, so that, that's, you, you know, guys got to so figure that out. I'm hearing, oh, when we move it, everyone realizes it's got to come closer to the street because we're in the 50 foot setback. So when we move it to the left and the inch is 20 feet, it's going to move closer to the property line, the, the street. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need a variance from there. So the technical issue of does this have to be resubmitted is a new variance because now we're asking for a different variance for that yeah, lot. Yeah, you have to re-advertise that. Yeah, we have so, to re so the whole process, we're this way, we're sitting and going, so, gee, the reason we did it this way was so that lot did not. Right. It slows variance. you down and it's more cost. But the suggestion, so I just wanted to quit because now it's not a week or two. Now we're talking about the whole process yeah. and advertising and well, of the butters. I don't know if the board is telling you you have, I, I didn't hear anybody say you had to do it. What I heard was they wanted you to take it into consideration, and maybe that's something that Mr. Koch would, you know, he would give, he would do a give and take, but ultimately it's your petition. So right. you have to decide what's within the constraints that you want to go with. Well, I think on yeah. this side we're sitting here going, hey, we're open, we're listening, we're listening to the neighbors. It might solve a bunch of problems. Yeah. Obviously cause more headache as far as... The process, maybe time, and time is always money. Hmm. So, in you know, we do this for a living, so we know. Right. You do make all those changes, you spend all this money, and you come back and you go, well, gee, now you're here, and see it. Yeah. And everybody gets excited. You know, gee, we did what you asked. You know, so yeah, right. trying to the broader picture. I understand. It will be the same neighbors that we're trying to do things to help. There will be the same ones that come back and go, well, now they need a variance for that lot, too. Right. I don't think anybody told you to get a variance, no. right? No. But no if they choose to get one. So you know the physics of it, we yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. Because that new house right. is on all the setbacks. Right. And we so the main once item. we move it, that means variance. We understand. Not if you shrink it, like Ms. McIntyre proposed. Well, we can't shrink it too. You know, the issue that was Ms. McIntyre's. shrinking. Yeah. You know, the existing one I don't like giving out variance, variances house. that I do not have to. You know, a three bedroom house in this price range is right. tough on the market. But I but, but, but the existing house yeah. we were giving you options. It, options which you can choose to do and present to us is yeah. what we were doing. Yeah, what, yeah we, we understand the constraints that, okay. in terms of where you are today. And see what you come up with. May 9th, the, the date works fine for us, okay. and it would also give us time to amend to add an additional variance request and to re-notice. So we, we would have time with the May 9th date to, to okay. get that resubmitted. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll Just for the record, I'm not a fan of adding, adding in variances that don't need to be, but I'm only one out of <laughs> we'll, we'll five. We'll How many? Five. All right. So, we'll, so uh, you, you want to continue the 9th? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll not a fan. Me. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move this to May 9th, please. Okay. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that stands continued. There's a uh, form Mitchell, uh, Mitch, uh, Merrill will get for you. And then, so May 9th will be the next meeting date for you folks. Okay, so this, this is your notice for that, to come to that meeting, because they don't send out any of us. Um, Thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next on the agenda, looks like we had a D DHCD letter, and I will hear a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. I'll second that one, too. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.